Brett Perigo, tonight's second place finisher. Plenty of fans here, Brett, and a solid second place finish. Yeah, I got to shout out the uh, Turn 2 Terror Boards over there. Uh, they're all a bunch of good guys to hang out with, talk to. I, I really like them. How are you doing tonight, man? Hey, I'm talking here. <laughs> you know who you're talking to? <laughs> my <Yeah>. do man! <laughs> I'm on my way to Monday Night Raw! The second one. <laughs> <laughs> Your choice. It's a oh. trap. I feel like it is. I feel like he's, he's setting up fights in the front stretch. Is what he's trying to do. <laughs> Way. We've got Devin Board with us at Keen Motorsports Shop here with Kyle Keen. Sitting here with Sean Keen. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the racing history. Yep. What's going on, everyone? Turn to Terribles. It is Monday, March 11th. We got a great show for you tonight. Yes, everything was rained out this past week, but we went double. With our uh, with our guests this week, we got Kale Thomas uh, joining us. Uh, we're going to get to know him and uh, see what his 2024 plans are. And then later on in the show, uh, we'll go from an Ohio 23 to a PA 23 of the of the Stamen car, uh, shuttle <laughs> Shuttlesworth, uh, Chris Shuttlesworth, uh, crew chief. So uh, we'll be bringing him on later as well. So, fellas, I'm excited for this one. How how are you guys doing tonight? Cool. I'm doing wow. great. <laughs> Jeremy just wants to stare at me. Uh, doing great. I'm excited for this one. Uh, luckily, we had some news drop that we can talk about um, without having any racing this week, but it should be a good one. Yeah, you know, I, I can deal with, um, you know, if not having any racing this last weekend, pretty much anywhere, it sucks. Um, but hey, the, the world has blessed us with news this evening. So there's a few things we'll, we're going to get into and talk about, I'm sure, with both of our guests. And then a few other little things. So uh, yeah. I'm excited for this one for sure. We'll also take a quick little look at what's coming up this weekend. Hopefully the weather plays a little bit better for not only us here in PA, but maybe nationally as well. So, um, but yeah, let's get right into it. Let's bring in our first guest tonight, Kale Thomas. Kale, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. I uh, appreciate it. What's going on, buddy? It's good to see you, man. I, I appreciate you taking a little time out of here. Uh, be a little different for us. Um, I know you a little bit. Um, kind of, I got to meet you a little bit during the, kind of the COVID era when you were in Central Pennsylvania. But uh, we don't get to talk as as regular as we used to. And you've you've had some changes the last couple of years. I obviously follow what you do and your performance and things uh, out there in that um, Ohio Indiana kind of area. But a little bit of background. You're a young guy, and but you've been racing a while. So give our fans and our our people. We might have one one and a half people watching, but thank you everyone. Uh, but tell us a little bit about your racing history, your family's history, kind of where you got started and kind of where you're at today. Yeah, uh, my uh, family grew up in southern Indiana, uh, going to, you know, Hopstein, uh, Tri-State Speedway 
in uh, Indiana and uh, just kind of, you know, been race fans their whole lives. And, uh, you know, dad raced a little bit of micros here and there. And uh, uh, my uncle also raced non-wing sprint cars uh, in Indiana. So uh, just kind of always like a family thing. And, uh, you know, my dad didn't have a lot of money and he was racing micros at the time. And uh, he just realized, you know, I, I was turning five years old and he was like, you know what, this isn't really, you know, I'm not going to be a race car driver. So uh, he actually sold it and got me a quarter midget. And uh, later on there, uh, I actually, after a couple races, I actually quit because I accidentally wrecked a kid. And uh, so I kind of got scared and I uh, was worried and uh, didn't race for a couple years and uh, let it sit in the garage, but didn't let dad sell it, but uh, didn't race it either. And uh, it was uh, until I was nine years of age where I decided, you know what, I want to get um, back after it. Uh, one of my buddies at school actually raced and stuff. So uh i came home one day started racing again and uh we started going every weekend through the summer uh racing quarter midgets at mini indy and then after that uh you know i grew up a little bit i was turning about 13 uh 13 14 when i got into a full size like wing outlaw micro and uh raced uh the power i series uh kind of cut my teeth there you know racing with joe b miller and christopher bell and andrew felker and guys like that and then uh, when I turned, uh, was turning 16 is when uh, I was surprised with a, uh, you know, opportunity to drive a full size sprint car. And I've been racing uh, sprint cars the last 10 years, just uh, through my family's team. And in the last couple of years have been uh, lucky and fortunate enough to be able to uh, drive for uh, different car owners and try to make a living doing it. So um, kind of the kind of the traditional route, you know, took a little got started young, took some time off, came back to it, been in a full size car for a while. And, and you know, you kind of came on the scene whenever I would watch, you know, the All Stars or Ohio Speed Week or and you'd be in that 91, right? 91, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. And, and you, you would stand out Attica, Fremont, a couple of those places. And then then I'm like, wow, this, this guy's coming to Pennsylvania. You get an opportunity to run 39 Tron car. Uh, didn't last forever, but that's really when, you, like, I got to know you. Um, it was kind of a weird scenario. So for anybody watching, I got I met Kale uh, during COVID. Uh, everybody was at home, including sprint car drivers, and Kale got invited to run I racing, the World of Outlaw Invitational for for uh, on I racing, real life sprint car drivers. Well, Kale was fairly new to town, and uh, I think I found it on Twitter uh, at the time, and said, you know, Kale Thomas is looking for a sprint car rig. I had a sprint car rig and I had I racing. So during that, Kale raced in those events from my racing rig. I was like, this is freaking cool. Like for me, I was like, this is this is freaking cool, right? So I got to know you a little bit in that team. And obviously that, that deal didn't work out. And uh, like all the others haven't worked out. Neither here nor there. We're not here to talk about that tonight. But go back, you kind of go back to some some home rides, the 49, the 23. You had some really good runs in that 49 car. But I feel like that 49 car kind of is like this. Um, I, I don't know how to use the analogy, but they kind of just continue to go back to what they've always done. And and even you've had some, you had some really good runs in that 49. I felt like you were making some momentum there. Did you feel that way too? And then it kind of comes to a grinding halt again. Uh, did you feel the same way? Is it what I observed? Yeah, that's is kind of how um, it goes. And honestly, I've, I've felt that way with a lot of rides. Um, you know, not really the 39 never really got going there, but um, I only raced 13 times and half of them were day races or during COVID. So I don't know really how that's a very good benchmark at all. But, um, you know, you know, the 101, my last weekend there, I run six with the outlaws and uh, things were kind of already planned for me to be um, excluded from that program, but still hurt either way. You know, you know, I thought I promoted, um, you know, the driver in me to, you know, be a good hard worker and drive the car to its full potential. So either way, that was cool to get, um, you know, almost a top five with the outlaws at an Ohio track. And uh, then, you know, you go on to like the 49, uh, I mean, Port Royal, the Tuscarora 50. I mean, I started on the pole of that um, the night before I was in the C main to the B main. And the next night I put myself in position to start on the pole, um, didn't lead a lap, but uh, was right there. And, uh, you know, I think I ended up ninth, which in a 50 lap race around that kind of a track with that kind of uh, uh, difficulty of just opponents that you race against 
Um, I didn't race there all year. And so, uh, you know, those guys get a race there every week. And so uh, to be one of the top outsiders to come in and do that well was really cool. Um, and then, yeah, I got let go from the 49 at the million. So I qualified fourth at that overall. And then, uh, you know, I think I was 15th in points after the first night. So in position and, uh, you know, a little heat race start, you miss it by one. And then in the B main, uh, you know, we don't have to go into details exactly all the ins and outs, but um, just, you know, there's a sometimes there's a lack of respect, I think, uh, when it comes to drivers to car owners and then car owners to drivers. And there just wasn't a lot of that uh, towards me for what I was trying to do with the a little schedule. I think we just hit our 10th race of the year was the million. And I mean, I thought we did a great job and uh, obviously they wanted to go a different route. So, uh, you know, you just keep plugging away and, uh, you know, the sport is a mental sport. So you got to really, uh, you know, work hard. But then also uh, uh, as a Purdue guy in me, uh, Matt Painter, the coach always talks about the highs. So you can't do get you can't do uh, get too high on the highs and you can't get too low on the lows. And so then that's kind of what I did. And uh and you just keep grinding away. Yeah, I think in, in that world, you know, you're, you're the perfect guy to kind of have that conversation about the highs and the lows. And, you know, it reminds me, of, it, there's a lot of correlations to, to business. And, you know, I've been in retail most of my life in some sort of retail environment, you know, and, and you're never as good as your biggest win and you're never as bad as your biggest loss. And, and that's kind of what that world is sometimes. And believing in yourself goes a long way. And I know you have the talent to get it done and it's finding that right, that right scenario. So, Tell us about the 23, because this is going to be year two. I feel like the 23 has also had its share in the history of some drivers in and out, in and out a little bit. I don't know anything about that team other than it's a 23. You tell me a little bit about, and again, because I'm not from that area, we have enough to worry about Pennsylvania and cars and owners and swaps and whatever. It's hard to keep track of it in a, in a you know, neighboring state sometimes. But tell us a little bit about that, because you're in year two, and and I, I feel like I, everything I've seen has been very positive. You've had some good results. So where does that lead you in 2024 here yeah uh i got to it was about a month or two after the split up i raced my 91 for a couple months and then uh <laughs> actually uh hunter schurenberg has been uh either texting me or texting jay kaiser the owner of the 23 uh to get me in the car for the last years just years uh and uh uh I'll be honest, he's the one that wasn't hitting me up back. So uh, I've been trying um, and uh, he's just a, a local guy who is slowly growing his program. I think he's been racing the last five, six, seven years. Uh, he's been in the sport a long time, just uh, either helping people or, you know, working on cars and then, you know, owned his own program now. And, you know, it starts off small just in his garage. And now we just got this a lot bigger shop that he just started renting out of. Um, you know, he's getting new cars, a couple motors, and uh, it's just slowly building it up. One of those like true grassroots uh, race program stories that you hear about. Uh, that's him to a T, super nice guy, uh, very uh, family oriented and uh, treated me with a lot of respect. Uh, he tried, you know, running with Zeth in the all-star deal. So I think they were doing a true like trying to make it all-star deal you know live on the road like cheap hotels no hotels make it all the way back home 12 hour drives all that stuff um and then so then when they had their little split up uh it was kind of you know he wanted to take a step back after that you know wasn't ready to go back on the road with you know another driver and he's been through some drivers the last couple of years and i've been through some car owners so i think we both had some some you know common ground that we wanted to settle on. Uh, I had a couple opportunities, at least at the end of the year and maybe during the winter that, you know, car owners talked to me or there was conversations that I had with uh, different people. And, you know, I talked to my, my dad and is a big part of my uh, racing and he's, you know, he's been my crew chief and he usually goes with me to all these teams. Cause uh, what's the beauty of having one of the best, I think he's one of the best crew chiefs in the country that doesn't do it full time. And then I, it's paired with a really good driver and a lot of teams love that because you know they don't have to pay for a crew chief and they get uh you know bang for their buck uh in two ways so uh i think that 
I talked to him and we talked about, you know, wanting to take a step back. Maybe this isn't the, you know, grass is always greener on the other side deal. Like maybe this isn't what looks like the best opportunity. Maybe there's a couple better ones, but with the amount of respect and trust that we built up and, you know, ending our last race of the season with a win with the Maverick series, it's just hard to, you know, if the deal isn't really a lot better, you just want to surround yourself with people who have the same goals as you and the same common belief, no matter what kind of money or equipment or whatever it may be, even though we, we are a smaller program or more local. I mean, I ran great with the outlaws and the all-stars and, you know, really already did well just a couple races in with this team. So uh, it's just stuff like that. It's more of a character, you know, decision than a, you know, I get to go race this amount of races or I get to go to this place. It's just, you know, you rather, you know, I've been trying to get sponsors with, you know, this team and try to help him out and reciprocate the uh, relationship. Yeah. And I, you know, we, we've talked to a lot of drivers and we've talked to a lot of people related to teams. That's kind of what we do on here. And yeah, I, I, I hear this over and over again about just the team and, a, and the people and having to get on the same page whether it's the driver has to come a little bit of the way or the owner has to come a little bit of the way about just having a common goal and understanding and, and that mutual respect for each other that they want to get, you want to get the same thing out of it and be open-minded to not, it's not just my way or, or the highway. And um, I feel like in, in all circumstances, winning, listen, winning cures everything. We know that you win races. Everybody feels good. It's when you're not winning shows a true character of what's going on. Right. And and it does sound very similar stories of where he was doing his thing over here with drivers and you're doing your thing here with owners. So, um, you know, you talked about a couple cars and a couple engine, a couple motors. What does 2024 look like? Uh, Maverick series, any, any kind of little bit of branching out again, that's not a good or bad thing. I'm just curious what your 2024 looks like. Yeah. I uh, actually kind of made a graphic. I haven't posted it yet. Um, of our well, schedule. <laughs> well, today's a great day. Are you ready to do it now? Uh, yeah, we can. You don't have to. You don't have to. Uh, hey, post it on Facebook, right? If you're ready to release it, put it out on Facebook to your things, and then send it to me. We'll put it on the screen here. If you want to do it now. Uh, okay. You, you Every, I, okay. Oh, I'll break the TGT right. news here, everybody. Let's, let's go. go. <laughs> All right. Gosh, dang. I mean, everything on this is uh, – it's just like the best possible scenario. This is what we could do um, for the schedule. Obviously, this is a lot of races, but we're probably going to be in the fifth. Uh-oh. Oh, See, no. We got too excited. Broken. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no, I, I hear him. He's back. He's back. Okay, he's back. You're back. Okay. We lost we you were. for 10 seconds. You said about 50, you said like 50 races or something yeah, like that? Yeah, 50, 60 races. Let me see if I can send this. Oh, my gosh. It's really aggressive for a slowly building team. Yeah, and there's there's 70 on this, but uh, it's more of like we're able to do this. Like we could do this. This is an option. Obviously, there's going to be setbacks and, you know, you're going to be, uh, you know, pick and choose your battles yeah. with uh, – the race season. Yeah. I mean, if you end up with some, you know, two, three race weekend type things and you hurt a car or do something, it's easy to go, okay, we'll pack it in for the weekend and see you next weekend. Right. Right. It's yeah. definitely one of those deals. You know, we talk about that a lot around here with Pennsylvania speed week guys plan to run X amount, but if they have a bad night early in the week, Hey, we can just skip three or four days and we'll see you at, at Port Royal Saturday or Lincoln Saturday instead of running, you know, every show. So right. um, it's very much up here for sure. Okay. All right. So let me just off the top of my head and just to go through it. I mean, uh, we're going to start off the year like doing some Attica, Attica stuff, local stuff, uh, the AFCS series. Uh, so local Attica Fremont series. Uh, and then after that, uh, there's a couple fast races. And then when we get into May is when the World of Outlaws and the High Limit series start coming towards yeah, here we go. Perfect. As we work over to the May, yellow, white is the uh, World of Outlaw shows, and then the high limit is in red. So definitely a lot of races close to us. So we can really, in March and April, really work on our program a lot and then get ready for May 
when the World of Outlaws, the high limit comes to Indiana. So that, you know, Lawrenceburg Speedway is only an hour away from me. And then you really get into thick of things in June. So that's the whole, the green is the whole Ohio Speed Week. And the purple is the Maverick Series. So lots of races over and over again. And then he even talked about instead of the Maverick Speed Week little deal, doing, I think that's during the Houston stuff. So if we're in the right time to go out there, we can go out there if we'd like as well. So, uh, and then uh, I have Knoxville on there. I don't know if this team will make it to Knoxville, but I wanted it on my schedule. And you never know uh, if we're having a good year. You know, he always goes out to Knoxville every year. So uh, if I can convince him and then just kind of the normal stuff, the Kings Royal, um, and then the high limit series is there as well. So, you know, I don't want to downplay, I don't want to downplay the Ohio speed week thing, but that may and July gauntlet of world of that law high limit. I mean, that that's going to be something, you know, for sure. If, if you're, you know, March and April is fine, you know, and I don't know, you, you know, more about those Ohio tracks, Attica, Fremont um, in March and April, are they going to be, do you feel like with the the tracks, are you going to have enough seat time and time together as a team to be ready for May? Eldora, I mean, it's a it's it's a gauntlet there in May. Do you, do you think that that's enough seat time? Again, not that you have a choice. Do you feel like you can get ready by May? Yeah, I mean, a, a story I'll tell you. Uh, oh man, what? It was uh in 2019. I started that season. I think I ran two local races like Attica Atomic and then the next week me and dad there we saw the weather and was looking and we're like this these World of Outlaw races at Lake Ozark and Lakeside look good I think we should go do that uh uh, Lake Lake Ozark I ran uh I think it was Lake Ozark or is it double Lake Ozark I don't know I think it was Lake Ozark Lakeside Either, either way Lake Ozark I make the dash I ran third in the dash, and then I think I ended up eighth or ninth in the feature. It was my third race of the year at a track I've never even been to in Missouri. So I I feel like if you give me a set, I can go race with the best of them. Uh, it's when it comes to the feature, you really got to, you know, get better and learn what the car's doing. But uh, fortunate enough to be pretty good early, and so I usually try to set myself up for success after qualifying and get through the heat race and uh you know lakeside the next night it was a half mile and i uh was fastest in practice uh qualified i was quick time for a little bit uh over some good guys Uh, i think i ended up sixth or something seventh and second in the heat i made the dash that night too so uh fourth race of the year so uh, definitely it's uh always possible to do uh good things You've, you've always been a pretty strong time trialer. You know, no matter what happens in features, you've always kind of set yourself up, you know, and there's a lot of guys that have to learn that or, you know, get, you know, that take, that's an acquired skill, whether it's themselves or the car. Um, that definitely helps you out a long way starting in, you know, the top five or eight versus the top 20. So uh, definitely a benefit to be able to time trial. And especially you get in again, May and July. It's all going to be time trials. So, um, you know, there, I give Ohio tracks a lot of crap because we're in Pennsylvania and of course we're better, but there's some tracks in Ohio that I want to go see. What is your favorite track in Ohio? Are we excluding Eldora? <laughs> um, yes. Eldora doesn't yeah. claim to be in Ohio. Uh, okay. so it yeah. it's like J- Jay-Z state. stole my question, by yeah. the way. Jimmy had a whole <laughs> thing, really had a whole thing lined up. up. <laughs> no, it's question. okay. Playing anything, we just do this on the fly. So, as a driver, I don't think really there's much anything in the country like Atomic Speedway. That place is so banked and so fast. Uh, video and pictures don't do it justice either until you walk physically and look down on the outside of one turns one and two and realize how much banking there is. You like no one will understand until you go. I mean. I don't know why when you take a picture of tracks that are banked, it's always flatter for some reason. Atomic is steep, especially at the top of one and two. Uh, the speeds that you carry there are humongous. Obviously, you know, when they have good races there, it's some of the best. Uh, it's tough when a tracks that fast and can be one lane. 
because it's so fast uh, between, uh, you know, rubber laying down and it just uh, in the, the, the water washes down, down the banking. So it's really hard to keep the essence of the track, you know, good. And there's always uh, different opinions on whether you should wet it more or let it go or whatever. Uh, we don't have to get into that, but definitely Atomic Speedway, I think for a fan and a driver, and then probably fan in general, and even driver now, because I have to give credit to Wayne County Speedway. They've done an amazing job the last, I'd say, five years, four years, three years of really turning around that track uh, because it was one of my least favorite places to go to. It was dirty. It was hard to see. It was hard to pass, which all of those things still can be true some nights. But for the most part, they're giving us a really consistent track every night and giving us the same kind of race. And we're, like, you know, you, you're expecting what you expect every night. So uh, they've definitely uh, given the racers what they want. And then the fans reciprocate that because they always fill the stands there, even on a local show. Interesting. There, there were not the answers I was expecting. I don't know what I was expecting, but they weren't. The, I didn't have those two on the top of my bingo card. Um, the one question I had, just because this is just me, I, I, I enjoy watching races at Attica on TV, on, you know, on Flow or wherever. It looks challenging, but it looks fun. It, is it more of one or than the other one than the other? Because I feel like you can, you know, rip the top. It looks super challenging. It can get a little, maybe narrow up there. You really got to watch what you're doing, but I also feel like, you know, you can really dive to the bottom and make the car rotate and it, and it look fun drive off. Like it looks both. Is that fair to say, or is it more of one than the other? Yeah. Attica when it's, you know, close to, you know, multiple lanes, it is if your 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 car is close and you're you know in a position, you can go anywhere you want and uh, basically it's a big sandbox. I have about like ten different ways I drive that place depending on the situation, uh, between like stop and go to letting it go to running through the middle through zipping on the top, uh, sliding yourself, diamonding. I mean, you, you really you're you're just challenge you're just only challenged by what you can come up with in your head or what your car is allowing you to do. Uh, so it's definitely a really cool place, uh, and I would say that place too when it's right. It's one of my favorite, but um, you know, just lately it's just been really dusty and hard to see. And I think even the fans have thought that too. So I think that's kind of what's making it hard to pass as well. Because when I go run the top in one and two, I literally can't see between the dust and uh, there's no lighting actually in one and two. So that's kind of one of the bigger problems that we've had there. And I don't like bashing tracks at all because I, you know, I know how much it would cost probably to get more lighting over there or whatever. But, uh, you know, with the new uh, opinions coming out on what we should do to make the racing better. I mean, if I could see off of turn two, I probably would be doing more cooler uh, passes around the outside. But I'm going to stay on the bottom where I can see the tractor tires instead of ripping the top when uh, when the nighttime comes well i think there's a balance there and i think you can be a little critical of the track when it becomes a safety issue um so yeah attica get some freaking lights in one and two would you all right jimmy chris what do you guys got uh i wanted your opinion on uh ohio speed week here uh, obviously big changes this year with the different sanctioning uh you know going to, over to fast series from what was the all-stars uh how do you feel about the schedule this what this year how it's being set up to be run and how do you feel about your chances of maybe taking that title down uh just with everything with all the series and stuff yeah uh the world of outlaws i love that they added they doubled down with uh some openings and i love that they are wanting to include in ohio more uh there's some really good racetracks that they're coming to so i think i think we honestly can race the outlaws like 20 25 times in just ohio alone so that's really cool uh from uh you know I try to you need to try to perform when the outlaws come so it's it's definitely a, a block to showcase your skills and uh what you what set where you're at for the season because you know you can race the same people over and over again but you really don't know where you're at till they come uh i wish high limit was coming more uh they have a couple races but you know it's just really confusing why they didn't want to run more races or whoever's fault it was i don't care whose fault it was i just wish there was more high limit races because there was tons of at least all-star races that I used to run that I don't get a run now, which they were also a building block much a little bit higher than just a local race to be able to see where we stand. And then when you go race the outlaws, then you kind of like, oh, okay, so this is where we're at. Or if 
vice versa. So uh, I think there's a couple series like Maverick that have stepped up and then, uh, you know, fast is doing what they can, but uh, you know, you gotta have uh, one of those middle ground series like fast or Maverick or the all-stars to, uh, you know, for guys like me, which are regional, which are good enough to run with the good guys. But, you know, we, we need to, you know, make some money here and there or like try to, try to run better with some better guys as well. That's maybe not what about all caliber teams. So uh, there's just a lot of yin and yang to all of this. Um, but I'm really excited at the end of the day. I mean, it's just as an Ohio guy, you have so many options to choose from, even just on a regular weekly uh, race. Uh, you know, you go run Attica on Fridays and then you have Wayne County, Fremont, Sharon or Atomic on Saturday. I don't think people realize, you know, uh, Pennsylvania probably has like the up to snuff competition there you know higher up but when you look at ohio's just base we have a really strong like rooted uh you know 100 cars can race in ohio alone and i think that's just a testimony to uh you know what the all-stars have done for ohio and it's unfortunate to see them go but we'll just keep uh you know maverick stepping up and all these uh you know high limit world of outlaws are bringing more money for us and stuff so uh it's definitely i've been on more of the business side lately trying to figure out the streaming stuff and how to get sponsors and you know to showcase their products or their services to benefit them and stuff through the series and streaming chris um so the question i had is looking at your schedule Kale, is there a race um, a race that you have circled that you're most looking forward to um, for whatever reason? I guess when the outlaws first come, I mean, I guess that that'll be it because then I'll have two months to know where I'm at and then be able to try to beat them. So uh, I guess I'd say that, but um, even just the first race, we're supposed to start Friday. So right now I have that circled. Uh, you know, you got to start the year off strong and, you know, just get yourself back in the mentality of things. Sure. So um, follow that up with, uh, what are your expectations for the season? Obviously, obviously you run well, get your program in the right direction. What are your expectations? Um, and what would you consider a good season when we get into October? Uh, usually my cookie cutter answer is, you know, just take things weekend by weekend and, uh, you know, try to get and, you know, build a notebook and learn and, uh, you know, just keep building off of what we learn and stuff. And, uh, just try to have the best finish I can every night. But after you end the year off a win and the way we were doing at the end of the year, I, I want to win. So uh, I, I, I would love to just win week in and week out over and over again. I, I want to get on a hot streak. Uh, even if I don't win, I want to be the guy that could have won that night. And guys like, damn, if this didn't happen, then he could have won the night or, you know, he finished second five times in a row or something. I'm, I'm just ready to just, you know, crack down on everything I know about sprint car racing and just really push myself more than I ever have before. Um, the one thing I know, you know, just my unfamiliarity with it in Pennsylvania, we don't really have series, right? We have, you have tracks and, and you, and series come in and we run them with Maverick and fast. Where do you think that comes from to have a need for that? And, or, or I just don't understand like kind of the history behind needing to have a series if all these tracks run a lot of these tracks run weekly that guys don't like kind of around here right williams grove friday porter lincoln saturday you have these other you know uh sealands grove and then baps and some of them have their own thing but they're not a touring slash local series thing so give me an idea of where sort of if you know or have an idea of kind of where that came from and why we're even developing a new one in maverick you know that's a really hard question i'll be honest with you and i i don't I have to my I have to do my own research, but yeah, it always and, like, I'm like I don't understand it. But you're exactly right. I, I think there's a lot of people that don't understand it, especially since I got to race in PA and I got to experience what they do out there. There's no series yet. We're racing for these big amounts of money, or you, you there's kind of a camaraderie of the tracks working together a little bit, especially during PA Speed Week. So <laughs> the fact that there's like tracks can't work together or you know, I've always thought, why do we have to have four choices on Saturday? I would love for like a mini series or like some kind of like we go to Fremont on one Saturday, the next week we go this track and then they can build their program 
with late models and 360s to counteract the 410s being out of town. And maybe that would surplus the fans a little bit. Late model fans will come out for the late model shows. They get a week off. And then the next week, the 410s are back or two weeks, the 410s are back. And maybe there'll be some, uh, you know, working together in camaraderie so what the fans can go out and you know you're not going to have all these fans come from atomic speedway and you know close to cincinnati and go all the way north to fremont but you would have maybe a couple of drivers here and there or it'll allow drivers to go some someplace else instead of being stuck at fremont or stuck at sharon or stuck at atomic and then that's what i was thinking about ohio speed week i was like why do we even have to have a series why why, why can't you guys work together you elect a guy to be in charge of it. I mean, I think even some drivers could do it because we, you know, how many drivers meetings and how many different sanctioning bodies I've been a part of. I was like, hell, if I was an eraser, I would do it. But it's just, I, I don't know if it comes down to sponsors or maybe that's what helps because PA has a lot better fans, like income coming in. You guys just get, you bring in the fans. So maybe that's why they're not worried about the income and then the, the different series bring in sponsors. So I, I don't really know the answer besides that. I think it could be done without a, a, a series, but we have series and they do a good job and they handle everything for the tracks. And maybe that's what the tracks are comfortable with. Yeah. And, and again, I, I don't know if there is a right answer, but it just, I never understood like, you know, Maverick, I kind of understood a little bit because it's going to be, that Indiana area, right? And, it, and it's trying to build up a, a division that doesn't have a ton of cars right now. But in the Ohio area, I don't understand the series. There, like you said, there's a hundred cars on a given night spread across a bunch of tracks, but there's also a series. And who's going to follow the series when they can have the freedom to go anywhere they want? And is there more, like, it just doesn't make any sense. Maverick, I can understand a little bit, a little bit because of location and their goal is to build wing sprint car racing in that area. Uh, but anyway, um, Lernerville's on your schedule a couple times, and mostly with high limit. How many times have you been at Lernerville? Four times. Four Never. times. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, going with high limit seems logical. Let's do that. Um, <laughs> uh, listen, I, I think it'll be fine. What do you think about that place as far as tracks go? It's it's very unique. Obviously, it's very different on either end. What's your experience been there? Oh, it's been great. Uh, it's it's similar to Atomic, so I can, you know, I guess that's the only place. That's that's the place I was missing. That's the only place that's close to Atomic. There's a lot of, di there's different things about both. Uh, but, you know, it's a really good track. I, I love when it gets uh, open and wide. I think that's kind of the only complaint I've ever had is, like, it's wet early, which, but it brings a good race come a main time. Uh, so then it's hard to pass in the heats and stuff like that. But, uh, no, it's been great. Uh I've gotten third. I've gotten a podium finish there with the, was it a fast show? I think a fast show. And then uh, All-Stars. I've blown a tire there with the All-Stars. And then uh, World of Outlaws. I have a World of Outlaw race there. And I was actually, actually started in the back 20th or something. I was up to like 15th, 14th. And then I got lapped. And that was the controversial race where i actually gained speed and i was the second fastest car on the track behind sheldon sheldon was waxing everyone's ass and i stayed ahead a second the whole time and so what happened was he blew a tire and so i got my lap back because second never passed me but then sheldon had to start behind everybody that he lapped because of just the way it worked or something i don't know it was that controversial race but uh Luckily, I was really fast, and I just wish I didn't start in the back or I could have, you know, made my way up. But I was just rolling through the middle, rolling through the bottom like I normally do. And, uh, you know, I had a really fast race car. So I love that place. So I'm looking forward to it. And I seem to qualify well there every time I ran there. So it uh, should be good to uh, run against the high limit there. Well, I'll just say, just let the owner know you're not that far from Port Royal there. Okay. So. If you're getting closer, uh, just let the owner know, right? Look at the calendar. No, but we're going to get you out of here in a minute. I, I do want to get your take. Uh, Jimmy's going to have finish up. Actually, Jimmy, do you have a question or you want to do the it? Uh, I just had a question. Uh, you know, you got to race both Ohio tracks and PA tracks, obviously. Um, which ones are better and why is it Pennsylvania? 
if if it wasn't for Port Royal, I would immediately say Ohio. But uh, Port Royal is probably one of the best racetracks in the country, so I'll just say PA. I just wanted to throw that jab in there. Go ahead, Jay-Z. Sorry. Um, no, we just got one more thing. I, and uh, with today's news, and we're actually our next guest, we're going to have another guest on. We're going to talk a, probably a little more in depth because you know, I don't care what he's ever done in his career. So um, <laughs> a little different here if he's already here. Is he listening in the background? Is he here yet? No, he's not here yet. Okay. I, was I, hope, he's, he's I hope he's watching the show right now. Um, the Wickerbill news just came out for Central Pennsylvania. We announced it. Give me your thoughts. Before today came out, you and I were talking, and you said, I have thoughts. The forum is yours, sir. Yeah. You want the short answer or the long answer? I, I'm here till we have our other guests show up. So you you have, um, you know, we're, we're just going to sit back and listen. Well, I think I saw your other guests post something, what his opinion was earlier today. Uh, so I'm just going to lay out the foundation before I give an opinion, because I think that's the best thing to do with stuff like this is let's just lay out the facts and, you know, just go through it. So, uh, you know, they're adding wicker bills. What's a wicker bill do? Okay, adds downforce. Um, there's a certain team that tested this at Eldora. Uh, each half inch adds 400 pounds of downforce per half inch at 140 mile per hour racetrack. So you can decrease it however you want with the different mile per hour. But what, what wicker bills do is they add downforce. That's a fact. That's a 100% fact. Uh, when you take them away, I think you got to work in the macros to really understand this. Uh, when you take the wings off, what happens? There's no downforce. There's no dirty air. Non-wing sprint cars do not have dirty air. So if you look at the micro compared to the macro, what would going an inch, two inches, three inches less from what you already have, what would that do? It would take away downforce, thus creating less dirty air. If you go up, you create more dirty air or more downforce. But at the end of the day, no matter what the numbers are, if you have no wicker bill or a five inch wicker bill, I don't think you're really going to truly see a difference in dirty air because we have a big wing on top of our car. We drive wing sprint cars. That's the whole point of wing sprint cars. We have dirty air. We go faster. It's just like any other, you know, high fluting IndyCar, NASCAR, Formula One. If we want to be at the top of our pecking order or however you want to look at it, whatever, downforce doesn't create, you know, better racing or whatever, but it's just, it's the nature of the beast. We go 140, mi 140 miles per hour at these half mile tracks. It's just, you're going to have dirty air. It's just part of it. Even if you have a stock car with no wing, you have dirty air. So I, I just don't know why everyone's hung up on it. I just wish everyone would just decide on something. And I think that's the only way you can test it, because if you're looking at it from the three inch perspective with the two tracks in uh, Ohio, their philosophy is we need to go the other way because we got to try something different. Well, let's look at it this way. If I'm on a one inch and this person's on a two inch and this person's on a three inch, w what's the test? Are we testing if the three inch guy can pass us or are we making sure the one inch guy stays ahead or does he get passed if he can't pass and what? It's just the only way this uh, theory or this, um, you know, experiment works is if everyone's on a three inch at this angle, like whatever angle you pick, it's got to be it's got to be exactly the same because everyone's on different angles. Everyone's on different wicker bills. So I'm not upset about someone coming in, you know, running a three inch. I'm more upset the next couple of weeks of guys running two inch which we know is good or can be good when the track gets slicker. When the outlaws come, we're going to be back on a one inch. So am I going to sit around on a one inch getting beat by two inches? Or am I going to, you know, go to a two inch and then have no notebook when it come, when they come back? And for anyone that says, oh, it's just a half inch, it's just an inch difference, it's not that big of a deal, then why are we doing it? <laughs> why are we doing it if it's not a big deal? So it just is it, it, it's not going to fix the problems i applaud the pa tracks of making a decision if the outlaws opened it up to three inch open it up let's go here we go but um it's really just not going to work till um everyone runs the same thing how are you even going to test it and then what's the criteria sorry what's the criteria 
is it if the guy from 20th passes five cars or is it if he passes 10 cars was the track wet was there a top and a bottom was it just the bottom there's just there's too many variables how are we going to know if it works or not i just i, I don't know does uh you know the, the variation of the different sizes would that be then more of a driver comfort thing you know do you notice the big difference a hundred percent i think i'm one of the only guys there's got to be other guys out there but consistently i don't if i can get away with not running a two inch wicker bell i try to stay at one inch i try to stay lower i just get i get tight and flighty i mean the only way i can compare this is on i racing you know when you move your wing back too far and you get that feeling of just tight down the straightaway in the into the corner you're you're nosing that's how i feel it makes a big difference every half inch it really does i think even a quarter inch makes a difference so uh, it's definitely driver preference and it adds down for so i i just i don't know why we think that guys are going to just be hooking up their horsepower easier and it's going to be hard to i mean it's going to be just like on i racing when the everyone ran the top and the bottom's still wet and then everyone's on the bottom that feeling you get when you're on the bottom and you can't pass is how it feels if we put probably put a three inch wicker on or 10 inch wicker on whatever and you can always do things you can move the right rear out you can add stagger like you do but at the end of the day it's just it, it's there's still going to be dirty air it's just it's not going to change so even with this conversation of of maybe changing maybe not changing where do you think the ideas even come from to make a change who decided that it was time to test this or who decided it was time to look into this i i don't understand i don't understand the problem they're trying to solve no one has actually said we're trying to solve this problem so here's what we're going to test why is like, I, I don't even understand. Have you heard anything like where this is even coming from? I've tried to stay out of it. I haven't posted on anything on social media and I almost didn't say anything on this podcast, but I felt like I've thought about it long enough, you know, and my dad's an engineer and stuff like that. And where we can come at it from, you know, a perspective of just using science and math to really just, you know, keep our opinions out of it and stuff. I, I bet the outlaws and i've heard outlaw drivers that's what i hear is outlaw drivers i don't know exactly the conversations of what is going on or why that there's a problem uh, I, I think there's way more important or bigger problems that sprint car racing has over one inch of aluminum i i, I just I, just like when i talked about the lights at attica i think there's a lot of things that i would rather be done even if it's like fundraising money for them to do it. I don't know what, I, I just know that there's a ton of, tons of things that racers really care about or worry about from either a safety perspective or maybe even a competition uh, perspective or even money, you know, helping teams save money. I, I don't know why we're on this intro of stuff. I, I, don't, yeah. I don't really know. I, I feel like the last couple of years, and I feel like when I first started, you could only run one inch when I first started. And then they allowed two inch in the middle of all this, like 2018, 17, 19. And then now we're back going, reverting back, which I, I feel like if you're good, you can pass. If you're not good, you can't. I mean, Brent Marks, do you guys remember Brent Marks this time or a month in the next month? This time last year, he went from 20th to the win. He passed my ass. He passed me. And I was leading. And I couldn't believe it. And I, that was at Attica. He probably had a two-inch on, one-inch. I don't know. Who knows what he had on? Who cares? Uh, I just – <laughs> do we have a passing problem when he he does that? I, I, I don't know. I guess we right. do. I guess it's only the person who's not passing cars with the passing problem, huh? Yeah, you know, it's just one of those deals. It's how you how you been lately. If it's it, like I said, winning cures a lot of things, right? Everyone everyone has everything's right when you're winning. When you're not winning, it's it's it. The world is falling at times, you know. So, uh, man, I appreciate your time so much, dude. Um, we've kept you here for just shy of an hour. Jimmy, you want to get him out of here? Yeah. Uh, so obviously, you got 2024 season coming up. Um, let everybody know who helps you get to and from the track this year 
Okay, I'm still working on this. There's a, a lot of people that help uh, J Kaiser Racing and myself. Uh, I'll try to do the 23 sponsors. Oh, heck yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, on uh, the JK uh, Racing number 23, we got Spanky's Pizza, uh, Napa of Bryan, Ohio, Schluck's Bar and Grill, uh, BH41, uh, uh, Factory Cane Shocks. They help me as well. Uh, Kaiser Racing Wheels. I'm sure I'm forgetting someone else. I, I don't know. Kistler Racing Products, Racing Engines, they help me out a ton. Uh, and then, you know, some of my personal sponsors that are going to help this year, as well as uh, just me personally, uh, you know, K1 Race Suits, uh, Bell Racing Helmets, Ingular Machine and Tool, Factory Cane Shocks, uh, uh, Ohio Heating and Refrigeration, uh, SFE Services. Uh, there's just so many guys that uh, help out. Um, I, I got to get better at this, boys. I, I'm rusty. I'm rusty. Yeah, what are you going to do when you go on a race this year? Yeah, it's, it's, you're, you're going to be winning in no time. You better get it figured out, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, I know. So, actually, are you March 15th, four days, opener, out of yeah. this weekend, right? Yeah, it looks like rain, but. Uh, you shut your goddamn mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a realist, so I'd rather if you see rain and it's 40 degrees, probably should uh, you know wait till next week. But yeah. I also have to drive four hours, so that Makes changes sense. things. Okay. Yeah. All right, brother. Hey, man, I appreciate you so much, dude. I thanks for coming on, and uh, we're gonna be watching. I'll be watching a lot this year. Um, and uh, don't worry, I'll be texting you as soon as you're in victory lane. And you'll see it the next day after you get sobered up. But uh, I'll, I'll be in the I'll be in the inbox, buddy. I got you. Thanks. Right. Thanks, guys. Take care, man. Have a great. Thank one. you. Thanks, Kale. Thanks, Kale. Uh, yeah. So that was that was fun with Kale. Uh, good dude. We got you know Jay Z. I know you got to meet him over 2020, like you said, and we got to know him a little bit. I racing with him and stuff like that. So it's cool to really have a sit down, a good sit down conversation, and pick his brain and find out more about him. So definitely go check it out. Thank him for uh, also for giving his schedule. Uh, this is a pretty jam packed schedule and uh, very well done. So, um, yeah, definitely go and make sure you keep an eye out on Kale. Transition. Let's bring on our next guest. Uh, we're going to bring him in here. Hopefully, everything's working. We didn't get a chance to test. So, but he looks like he's ready. Uh, Chris Shuttlesworth, uh, crew chief of the Stamen number 23. Chris, how you doing? Thank you for joining us. Hey, how you guys doing? Great. Good. What's going on, brother? Uh, appreciate you coming in late night, hey, man. Uh, world of sprint cars uh, is never ending news here lately. Uh, probably for the like the last calendar year now, uh, ish. And uh, it really helps us when we have a rain out in central Pennsylvania and nothing else to talk about. We get this little nugget dropped in our lap. So I want to start with that, and then I want to talk a little bit about where what you're doing this year and uh, kind of how your year started. So. We ended with Kale talking a little bit about this wicker bill thing. And I want to start there because it's just a good continuation versus uh, getting back to it later. So uh, effective immediately, Babs Link and Port Royal Williams Grove Speedways are adopting a one inch wicker bill rule for the 410 sprint cars in conjunction with national series rules. This change should not cost any additional money to teams. Sure. OK, if any changes should be needed, we will address them at that time. So. You are never shy okay. of giving an opinion. So I did see your name pop up right away, right? Like a lot of people that in the, in the industry, um, you've been around a long time. You're, you have you know, shocks and you've been on teams a long time. You've seen a thing or two. So from your perspective, give me the lay of the land a little bit on what this means. Go ahead. The forum is yours, sir. All right. So I think first and foremost, we have to realize that uh, we live in central Pennsylvania, home of the half miles. OK, mm -hmm. so this is going to affect us more than anywhere else in the world, in my opinion. Um, so I, I'm all about one thing, and that is pro providing a good product for the race fan. Uh, that's what it's all about. Uh, I know that that is something that we've struggled with, uh, I feel like over the over a long period of time, bad racing, um, in my opinion, you know, um, no passing, uh, guys starting up front and winning, uh, 
guy starting up front with maybe not the best car, but nobody can pass him. I, I, I know that sounds kind of dumb, but, um, you know, aero is so huge on our cars nowadays that um, I just, you know, personally, I think going to the flat wing in 2008, I believe it was, um, uh, 2008, I think it was optional. Um, in 2009, I think was the first year for the flat wing. And uh, I, I I was obviously a lot younger then, but uh, I thought it was kind of dumb then. Um, but I mean, that's that's kind of just my opinion. So um, dirty, dirty air is is bigger now than it's ever been. Um, but, you know, the main reason why dirty air is so important and, 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 it, and it's and it's so bad is because we're driving around there with a flat wing on top of our car that is a total piece of crap. I mean, um, so, you know, creating creating more dirty air, um, you know, we, we basically our wings can only do so much. And the, 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 the air is so dirty that, you know, I, I think I think the thought process is, oh, let's put let's have a maximum of one inch. Will create less dirty air. I, I, I mean, I would, I would kind of agree with that, um, but I don't think it's going to matter um, because, in other words, the wing, the wing is such a piece of crap that um, you can't utilize what you what you have anyway. You know, you, you can't. So I think that allowing a two inch, um, first of all, I think the flat wing is just is not good for for racing, in my opinion. But um, allowing a two inch it, it at least allows you uh to get to to try to to try to take control of more of the dirty air to allow better racing so so because we're under kind of there, out there, and what's that i said no i kind of said a lot there but um it's kind of it's kind of hard hard to really explain it um, no and, and not everybody you. agrees with me that's for sure <laughs> And, and that's okay too, because I don't know if there's a right answer. I just know it's what either teams prefer, you like, what, and, and I don't know if there's one that says, "Hey, common sense says we should be doing this," and we're not. I, I haven't heard anyone make it make it that clear to me that this is the way it should be. We're not doing that, or even that this rule is going to do anything to help the racing. There, where's the proof at, right? So, but here's what I want to know: a little bit of history. You said 08 dish wing versus flat wing. Because we're underprepared, we all have real jobs. We're not ready for illustrations and and slides here when we show jimmy do you have a picture of a just a normal sprint car you can see the top wing uh maybe to show what difference in flat and, and dished so what we're talking about here um and we don't have an illustration but the the center portion of the wing between the two side panels is flat it is a one flat piece of uh, aluminum Back in the day, what he's talking about when he said dished wings, it's sort of like if you look at the front wing, it has a curvature to it. Am I am I right on that, Chris? That the top wing used to have that. You were allowed to have a curvature dished. Yeah, all you'd have to do is look up like uh, ASCS three hundred and sixty. I mean, still has always allowed that. So most um, a lot of those guys still run dished wings. Like you can run either or. So when the so, you talked about the flat wing and it sort of being a piece of crap and creating more dirty air. My brain, my simple ass brain thinks a dish wing would create more dirty air because the air is now being ejected up even higher than this flat wing would. This flat wing feels like it would maybe go drop off the backside, maybe to the car behind. Why is that sound counterintuitive to kind of what you were saying a minute ago? So, so I feel like we're more focused on trying to create less dirty air and not how to utilize the dirty air that's already there. In other words, the flat wing is not good enough to, I mean, it's an, it's an aerodynamic nightmare. You don't, you don't have to be that intelligent to know that, you know, you have a belly under the wing and the top is flat. I mean, it's, it's not supposed to even be remotely like that. Um, but anyway, so that was way back 2009 or whatever, but anyway, so, the wings, they're just not very good. So, so when, when our race cars, you know, when, when our guys, um, when they get in a spot, um, where there's a bunch of dirty air, you can physically, you know, visually see, I, I can, you can see it. If you know what you're looking at, you can clearly see 
that oh that race is not going to happen because like you know oh they're they're running you know up near each other they, this guy catches this guy and he he there's nothing he can do because his car turns into such a handful that he can't he can't make anything happen that that's why you see so much single like you know parades in my opinion um so I don't, I think we're looking at it the wrong way. I think that they're more worried about creating less dirty air, but the fact is the wing is not, I mean, it's not really a wing. So it is, it just, it can't, it can't grab enough of that dirty air and do the right thing with the dirty air to provide any sort of downforce for the race car. So I don't think we should look at creating uh, less uh, dirty air. I, I think we're looking at the worker bill thing wrong. I don't really don't know how else to say that. Right. So you're saying we shouldn't try to solve the dirty air problem. We should learn how to use the dirty air because you can't get rid of dirty yeah. air. That's what. So you might as well Absolutely. find a way to take that and make the cars be able to be drivable with the dirty air that you can't get rid of anyway, which is more or less what Kale kind of was saying. You're always going to have dirty air 100%. because you have a big wing. So, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, I'm with you. And so I... Go ahead. So if we, I, th I feel like, I mean, I know it's not going to happen, but with, with that's, that's where I feel like we're making the mistake by taking the two inch wicker bill away is because it helps you at least grab a little bit more of that dirty air and, and, and make this much more downforce with a two inch as opposed to a one inch. So to me, that would provide this much better racing. It's not going to be a huge difference, but I think it would be enough. Um, so, Basically, I think that putting a one-inch wicker bill on them and only only allowing that is going to create, especially at the big tracks, really bad racing. I think okay. it'll be more. It'll be more of the same that we've been seeing, just parades. But that's so I'm glad you said that. That last point you just made right there um, is something that I'm going to talk about right now. And I, I actually got a, a DM a little bit ago from a driver on a tour. On, a, on one of the main series and said, um, I don't know why Central PA has done this because High Limit's about to announce they're doing a two inch. So they're not even going to do a one inch. So what they found it's, in it's testing in the was, rule book. And, and they're going to announce they're sticking with a two inch. So why Central PA has gone off this ledge? Now, what I liked in that literally said, if things change, we'll let people know. I tend to believe this won't stay. I, I really don't. I think they jumped the gun and said, hey, before we get into this next weekend, where Port's about to run, they should have ran, Williams Grove's going to open, Lincoln will be back for race three, let's make a decision and run. I believe it's going to end up changing. But what this driver told me was in their in their testing with the one inch, they found that the car behind, because the dirty air was there, regardless what you just said, they were not able to pass because they were not able to maneuver better than the car in front of them. With at least the two inch wicker or higher they had enough downforce to be able to make get to that car and pass that car because they could maneuver their car they had the downforce so the dirty air whether you have a one or two inch sounds like it's there regardless the additional downforce it creates for your own car outweighs the additional dirty air it creates if that makes sense so what they found was absolutely the one inch made the racing worse just like you said there without us knowing it and yet in central pa they've already found that but Central PA just got together and said, we're going to do a one inch. Listen, maybe they are smarter than us. I, I doubt it. I mean, well, you, I, they're definitely smarter than me because I'm, I'm just a fan. But <laughs> what I've gathered and listening to what you said, listen, what Kale said, now putting this together, because my brain went to, well, one inch wicker bill, less downforce, less dirty air, better passing for the car behind to get closer. This is a NASCAR. You don't have to worry about front downforce as much as we're talking about rear downforce. Front downforce matters, but you have a wing there. We're not talking about front downforce. We're all talking about rear downforce. And that matters more than, you know, the talk we have in NASCAR about front downforce is everything, everything in NASCAR. This is all about rear downforce. And that two-inch wicker bill sounds like it allows that car behind to still be maneuverable enough to make an attempt to pass. So um, I, I guess we will see. But at first, when I was, again, because I'm an uneducated moron, the one inch made sense to me. After listening to you guys who were living it and whether working on the car or driving the car, I don't necessarily feel like I agree with it now. But 
I guess this weekend in Central PA, we're going to see potentially two races with one inch wicker bills. Uh, what does it change? Yeah, and you might have been, you, you've probably, the, plenty of races honestly have been won around here on one inch wicker bills. But um, so, so to be clear, you know, I, I don't care if they make us put our wings on backwards. It's still my job to figure out how to make the race car fast. Fair. I'm strictly thinking, I'm strictly thinking about the product that we're, um providing to the to the race fans and that's what it's all about is is providing a quality product to get people in the stands to 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 pay money so we can race for good money and, and you know make a decent living doing this at the end of the day we have to provide a good product and in my opinion which doesn't really mean much i i just think that it, it makes zero sense to me but I am a little bit different. I, you know, my head works in mysterious ways and uh, not everybody sees sees everything how I see it. Um, but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I don't I don't want people to think that I'm complaining that we can't run a two inch wicker row. If we can't, we can't, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, my job is to still try to beat everybody else who has the same exact rule. I'm just worried about that product that we put on the racetrack for the fans. Cause that's what, ultimately that's what's important. And I asked Kale this at the very end, and the the one that still I I haven't I don't understand is where this even came from. Why did we go into January and Volusia and this became a topic? What were they trying to solve? I didn't hear anything about this going into the fall, and I'm not connected as like you are working directly with a car every weekend. But I feel like I'm on the fringe of connected enough that this would be something that would be on the radar. Of like, hey, they're going to do this in the spring. Have you been hearing about this before January, February? So. So I feel like way back when the whole flat wing thing started, it was, huh, let's unhook the cars. That'll make better racing. So that's that's what how they came up with this whole flat wing. I, that's what got us in this problem in the first place, uh, you know, 15 years ago or whatever it's been now. Uh, so I'm sure that th that's what they're thinking too. Hey, we, we run a smaller wicker bill. We can unhook the cars. Maybe it won't make as much dirty air. Wrong. Um, you know maybe it'll provide better racing I, I think it's i think it's going to make it worse but that's that's what i think we had billy dietrich on a couple weeks ago and he mentioned um danny was down in volusia and said they tested the one inch down there and he ran on it he felt like he had better tire wear because there was less downforce with this tire and that combo do you think there's any validity to that or is just too many variables we have to have more data and more more races to mm -hmm. to maybe see any kind of uh, not, I don't want to say he's wrong, but any validity in central PA and what we do, it, do you think there could be anything to that? Um, I, I, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, you said it was when he was at Volusia, right? Yeah. I, I think that it was, wasn't it like fairly wide open and wet and fast, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't, I don't think that would make any difference, but it's, it's not. To have a, a one inch versus a two inch on your race car by yourself, um, with you know, by yourself out there running time trial laps, I think you'd notice a small difference in traffic. You're going to notice a big difference. Um, but so I don't, I don't know how much that's going to affect the affect the tire wear. I, I mean, in all reality, we don't have tire wear issues. Um, at least you should. Um, you know, we uh, unless it's uh, Port Royal Labor Day race or, you know, the racetrack definitely takes rubber. Some, you know, that's, that's, a that doesn't matter what, I don't care if you got no worker bill on, you're going to destroy your tires that, and try to make it to the end. But, um, yeah. Yeah. That was really bad. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's a, that's another topic of discussion I get into, get into with, with people is they don't quite understand that, but you know, when rubber down versus completely dead slick, Completely dead slick is the best racing you're ever going to have. Uh, totally different than rubber down. But anyway, um, I guess basically I, I don't, I, I don't really think tire wear is an issue with any wicker bill. But yeah, no, that's fair. Just with the added downforce, brain goes, hey, pushing down to retire more. You know, in certain conditions, could it could it possibly maybe right? But I think it's it have to be a pretty abrasive track on the edge of taking rubber. You're going to have wear anyway, regardless. So. Like I get it, I, I'm with you. And 
who knows? I guess we'll, we're not going to ever know. Like Kev said, if unless you're one inch, two inch, three inch, you don't know, right, where the differences are. So anyway, so let's get uh, mildly away from that. And let's talk about what you're up to this year, man. Like seeing you in the pits last few years, you've kind of bounced around a little bit, had this going on, that going on. Tell us about what you got going on for 2024 and how your season started. So uh, I uh, got the call like a um, little after Thanksgiving to to go back to um, Stamen Motorsports uh, to be the crew chief for Devin Borden this year. Um, that's that's kind of the plan. Uh, things didn't really work out uh, the way you know I wanted it to this winter, but you know there's really not much I can do about that. I got I have to just you know deal with the cards that I'm dealt and just, uh, you know, kind of make it happen. So um, our plan is basically run everywhere we can. Um, you know, if it's um, if Port Royal is paying better than Lincoln, we'll be at Port Royal. If Lincoln's better, paying better than Port Royal, we will be at Lincoln. Um, most Friday nights at Williams Grove, all the BAPS races, uh, all the Sealands Grove races, the one Bridgeport race, apparently I heard there's only one. Which maybe maybe really upsets me because it's probably my favorite track. Spring, right? <laughs> or wait, did they add another one? I think they just added. It sounded second. like they might add two or three. But they said keep an eye out, so that would be uh, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. That's by far my favorite track. I think I think if you uh, if you take Bridgeport and you move it into Pennsylvania, I don't think uh, fans go to any other track. <laughs> but that's just how myself sure going there for the first time sport. last year for that for that 410 race i could probably i could i could attest to that <laughs> yeah bridgeport is awesome i have a bunch of friends who they're like man that's just too far which by the way we are so spoiled in pennsylvania or to live in this area you know we have however many racetracks in you know within a couple hours but um anyway you know i have some buddies that are like oh i'm not going there i'll watch it on flow and i'm like listen you can watch it on flow that's great and they're like, it's so cool. I'm like, if you think it's cool on flow, go, like, go there and watch because you will be blown away. And of course, I had a couple of buddies do that at the end of the year. And they were like, wow, this is so much better than what we even imagined. It's kind of like, you know, you watch Williams Grove on, I guess, Dirt Vision and then, you know, people throughout the country. And then when they actually show up, it's it's so much different. You know, it, it's like that with almost any racetrack. Yeah. But um. Yeah, so uh, we started our year off in Florida. Didn't go, didn't go great. Uh, didn't go bad either. You know, we were we were uh, pretty much up, down, in the middle. Just you know, just just going through the reps. You know, uh, for the beginning of the year um, with uh, Brian Groves forty five car. Um, you know, we, we had fun. Uh, we we did all right, but you know, not good by any means. Uh, and then. The icebreaker at Lincoln was a was a disaster uh, for us, um, myself included. You know, I didn't do a very good job. Um, you know, Devin, I think he'll admit he probably didn't do a very good job. Uh, we just we had so much going on; it just it just didn't work. You know, we just we just had an off day. Although, I mean, we were we were cruising in that in that feature. I, I think we started like twenty second. We were up to ninth or tenth in like eight laps. Uh, so I mean, we we were cruising in that, and he, he kind of got wrecked there. But um, you know, then we went back uh, last week, and you know, had a bad heat race. But I think everybody had a bad heat race unless you started on the pole. And then uh, you know, in the feature, we were extremely good. It sucks we had to start fifteenth or wherever we started because uh, we were we were definitely cruising. So that was that was a good uh, morale booster. I think you, you know nobody's happy with running fourth, but I'm just I'm just saying like we. It was, it was a positive day, um, and I think that I think that that helped us. Um, and now we're we're just excited to get racing. Um, so should be a good year. Um, really excited. Uh, you know, Stamen. You know, John Stamen, John Kelly Stamen, give us everything we could ever possibly need to make this happen. Um, so super excited. Uh, we have a really good group, group of guys uh, working in the shop every day, um, and. You know, I, I expect nothing but but good things. It's good. It's gonna it's gonna take a while, but I think we're gonna get to clicking, and, and I think we're gonna win some races. Um, that <clears throat> the two Lincoln races you talked about, uh, it definitely could have been a tale of two different weekends, right? Just like you talked about watching Devin try to make something happen in the heat, just didn't work. Just like you said, it just seemed all from the start. Uh, last week, obviously, 
you know, Fred Putney kind of worked his magic for that feature and, and it really put on a track that fits Devin very well. And, you know, there were even some times I saw Devin go to the bottom. He felt it, it looked like a different driver in week two than week one, whether comfortable, or not felt like he almost grew up from week one to week two a little bit in some of the things he was doing. But I got to be honest, I enjoy watching Devin race everywhere. But watching him race Lincoln is just an absolute, like, pleasure to watch. Because I'm like, you can't not watch him. You can't not hear him. He, the car's going by, and his car's always one. You're like, that's Devin. I can hear him. I didn't even have to look. And yeah. I know it's Devin. He tends to get everything out of a race car. Is that a little bit different from people maybe? Again, I'm not taking anything from anyone. But he is, to me, I feel like a little bit different driver do you have to do things a little bit different to kind of work toward what Devin, his style, or do you think it's a little bit of a compromise bringing him to you and you to him a little bit? I think it's definitely both. Um, I think that there's a time and place for everything and there is a time to be wide open and, and just out there knocking the fence down, but there's also a time to use your brain a little bit, you know, um, and I, th I think he's he's when he figures that out, I'm telling you, it's going to be really, really amazing. That kid has so much natural ability it is it's not even it, it's it's unreal. Um, but he's still and, and, he, and he's and he's he's good at it. He's coming along quickly, you know, but it's going to click for him uh, one of these days, hopefully soon. And and it's and it, he's really going to be able he's going to be to the point where you can get your his race car just okay and, and he's still going to be able to make stuff happen um it, it just it's something that takes guys you know five years at least uh to make that happen but when he when he gets it and he really really figures it out i'm telling you that he, he could be the the best in the business um in my opinion so that that's what's tough is you got these you know some of these kids with this all this natural talent and ability but that only takes you so far you know and then you have some of these guys that they didn't have a ton of natural ability but they work their ass off and they've become extremely good race car drivers so i would say he's ahead of the curve because of his natural ability but he's still in the curve you know like he still has a lot a lot a lot of work to do and he, but he's willing to put the work in um, and I think that's that's a big deal too. Um, it, it has been interesting to see that, and you know, it's amazing when you do watch guys who who you know watch a lot of racing in my day as a fan. And there's a lot of ways to win a race, and there's a lot of ways to climb the mountain as a driver. And stylistically, he has a style, and it's sort of like you know it can win a race, like you said. But then that veteranness of it, right? When the car may not be perfect, or the track doesn't suit what he is best at. Um, you know, I think of of a, like a Greg Hodnett, right? He he wasn't no a guy that was knocking the wall down, but he just could do whatever he needed to do. Lance has always been a guy who, if he has to run the middle or top, he could, but it's he's not going to drive by Devin on the top. But if he has to go do that, he can still make speed. So I, I believe that's just an experienced veteran thing. Like you said, it's laps and years and time. Um, one thing I noticed and and just being close and in photography and kind of taking pictures, I always feel like he has a very tight race car. Now, maybe not this year because there have been two races and there's different tracks, but it's a tight race car. Is that on purpose because he drives the piss out of it so he doesn't spin it out driving into the corner at times? Or is that something he likes? Or am I wrong that it's not a tight race car? Uh, you might not be wrong, uh, but uh, let's just see how we make it this year for him. Okay, that, that's fair. Again, it may change, right? I don't know. I just—it's an observation I made the last couple of years. Okay, I know things can be different, things will change, but I always kind of wondered that in the back of my head because, listen, I, I look at these pictures and I go, "God damn, it looks cool," but I don't know if it had to do that, right? Or is that? And I always wondered, is that for him, or was that just, again, stylistically from a crew chief perspective? Maybe you have a different take on it. So, listen, jury's out. We're only in race two. We're gonna find out. Is that what you're kind of saying? We'll find out. Uh, yeah. So, like every every single race car driver, uh, and, and each and one of you, if you raced, everybody's different. You can't yeah. take Danny Dietrich and put him in Anthony Macri's car, and he, he's never going to win. Um, and you or can't Anthony take Anthony Macri and put him in Danny Dietrich's car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. So, uh, like those two guys are what I would consider extreme opposites uh, when it when it comes to race cars. Um, 
So, you know, and, and they're all different. And, and yeah, to answer your question, yeah, Devin does like to be tight, but that's a, that's a, that's a wide open kid thing, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, they, they, they want to run, you know, the crap out of it all the time, no matter what, but you, you gotta, you gotta use your head sometimes and, and you gotta work on your, uh, you know, your actual, you know, your art, your, you know, the art of racing, you know, you can't, you can't just go out there and run wide open all the time. You know, it was like, uh, last year when I was still with them, uh, I think it was at the beginning of the year. Um, and he ended up passing, uh, Lance, uh, they went back and forth a couple of times and he, and he passed Lance, I think on the last lap coming to the, to the checkered. Um, and I remember telling him like, do you, so when, when you're trying to run Lance down, do you, he's not running harder than you. I promise you that. Like he's not. So <laughs> use your freaking head, you know, like you're, you're not running it harder might not be the answer here because he's not going to run it harder than you. So, you know, but I, I, I just, I think he's done a really good job. Uh, and he's, he's not afraid of some criticism. You know, I, I'm a big believer in constructive criticism, um, you know, and, and you know, a, a respectful, talk about um you know how how to how to just get better you know the the goal is you know every day is to do a better job you know try to get better try to get better try to get better so if there's any way that i can or he can or you know any of us can you know we're going to try to do that so you know we do we do you know devin does a great job of studying you know like you know that's that's what's cool about nowadays racing right is you know you can literally on your way home from the racetrack, you can watch the entire race. I mean, that's insane to me, you know? Um, back when I did it, you had to go buy the DVD the next week. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, there's, there's, and to me that is so freaking important is, is, is watching races, studying, studying other guys uh, and what, you know, what they're gonna do on the racetrack. Um, anyway, he, the kid does a really good job. He, it's it's hard to you know remember you know like when I'm working with him that he that he is still you know obviously a full grown adult at being 21 years old. But you know he's I remember when I was 21 and you know I didn't have near the head on my shoulders that he does. Uh, so so he's very very easy to work with and he's smart too. Uh, he he is smart so um, it helps and and I really on you know I'm not just saying this um, because because I work with the kid. I, I'm telling you. He, he's if, as long as as long as he can get it figured out here soon, it, he's he's going to be extremely tough to beat in the years ahead. Yeah, every interaction I've ever had with Devin from from his first races in Central PA conversations, we had him on the show last year, year yep. before I forget, or I forget last year. Just just an unbelievable kid to talk to. Seems very mature for his for his years. Um, you know, great attitude toward things for sure um you know and a student of it so um we have live comments and apparently we've had a ton of them they aren't showing yeah. up so yeah Jimmy. sorry guys our doc on the chat it's probably here good not... <laughs> i'm gonna go through them though i i went on facebook on my phone now and i'm seeing all the comments here so i apologize i know there are some questions for kale too maybe we'll try to talk to him and try to have him answer some of those questions but i do apologize but just going through some of the comments here uh this is how I knew our, our chat doc was broken because I didn't see Seth, yeah, Seth beyond. Dietrich. Yeah, uh, he, said, quiet. <laughs> he said, is there any chance I could race the spare car? <laughs> um, <no. laughs> um, and there was a couple comments going back to the wing conversation. Uh, the three, five, the, the three by five wing, uh, both uh, Aunt Bay and Tyler Koenig, uh, made a uh, a joke about that would that be an option <laughs> the three by five wing come on yeah it was more of a joke but yeah um uh either you guys really don't want my opinion on on that but uh <laughs> all right i'm just gonna say it anyway the yeah flat absolutely five by five the flat five by five hurt 358 racing bad uh when they went away from that stupid three by five which was stupid looking looked all goofy but it really, it, it really made for good racing. There we go. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. A couple other questions. Like, 
Yeah, basically, just all you kind of answered all these. Santos de la Cruz uh, said, What's up, Chris? Good luck this year. Can't wait to see you, DB, and Team 23 in Victory Lane. Yeah, hopefully, uh, we get there plenty of times. You know, it's we got to get one first, um, but I, we're, we're all excited to get to get racing. I can tell you that. Like, it, it's we know it's we know it's not going to happen right away. It might, but we know it's probably not going to happen right away. We, we just really got to keep working. Uh, and it'll pay off. <laughs> um, Seth Dietrich saying, all I want to know is what's going to be in the snack cabinet. I can't do any more damage to a card than you have, pal. I even have more Lincoln wins. <laughs> they might be <laughs> big wheel races, but they count. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, last time I saw Seth, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure he needs to know where the snack cabinet is. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Uh, Gary Ferguson said, what type of track does Devin like? Uh, I mean, you'd have to ask him, uh, but uh, I think that he likes anywhere he can run wide open. <laughs> um, so poor, poor uh, Royal. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and this is going to sound crazy, but it but it shows you, in my opinion, how far he really has come. I mean, so when he first showed up around here, you know, he, he turned some heads right away. Um, and I think a lot of people kind of, I mean, I'm not trying to say this it, it, bad in any way, but I think people kind of put the cart before the horse when it came with him. And they're like, man, this kid is phenomenal. And he is, but, and he was, but he, he had, you know, he had a ton of work to do to get to, to where he needed to be to, to, to win races. And, uh, you know, he seems like, I know he's very good at Port Royal, but it took time. I, I guess that was what I was kind of getting to. It, it, it took time. He's extremely good at Port Royal. He's really good at Sealand's Grove. He's good at Bridgeport. But he seems, I don't know if he'll admit this, but he seems to like the smaller places. Um, he just, I feel like he likes he likes to really, like, get in there and mix it up with guys. Uh, so I, that's what it seems like he likes. Um, now, what's weird is that, you know, we only maybe talked about this once or twice, but I, I don't think he likes Grandview, which I would feel like he would really like that place. But not really um, banking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but... <laughs> But um, yeah, I, I I feel like he here's here's the thing though. If you want to be a professional race car driver, you better like them all. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So at least at least be competent, right, and figure it out, Chris. Right. Right. So I was just gonna say, so like the schedule that y'all are doing this year is different than past year. Like you're not chasing a track championship, right? You're kind of you're getting out right. there more, doing a little bit more. Is that partially to develop? him as a driver and the team or just something you got the track championship time to move on for the next thing was kind of the idea there. Yeah. I think it was important uh, for, for him to, to, to kind of uh, get his, get his name on something that, 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 you know, that is, is important, you know, like a, like a track championship. Um, so it got his, it got his name kind of stamped on that. And then uh, he, 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 he wants to travel. Um, you know, you hear you hear a lot about um, guys saying, "Oh, you know, you become a better race car driver. Go on the road. Go on the road. It'll make you better. It'll make you better." Which you know that's true. But not only does it, it's the comp, it's the the competition. It's the guys you're racing against. Um, but not only does it make the race car driver better, it makes the entire team better um, because the competition is up for us as well. So. Um, but yeah, our, our schedule is, is kind of, you know, wrapped around, yeah, definitely making him better, making us better. And then, you know, this, this is, this is a pretty big, uh, you know, racing team, you know, we, we, we're big enough, we can get out there, do some stuff. So, uh, I think it was kind of just, uh, Hey, it's, it's time to go. And, you know, I think we're going to run Eldora like three or four times, um, maybe Knoxville. Uh, I, don't, I don't think that that's that's set in stone yet. Um, but I but I know for sure we're definitely doing the Eldora thing. Um, and then, like I said, just just trying to try to get out there, see some different places. Um, but but they, I know they don't want to be uh, as say they I mean, you know, John and Kelly statement. I know they don't want to be really tied to any racetrack in particular. You know, we want to go where the competition is, we want to go, uh, where the money is, uh, and we just want to go, you know, if, if we get, we get our butts kicked, that's okay. We just have to continue to get better. Um, and I, and I think that's kind of the goal is, 
you, know, you get your teeth kicked in so many times. If you don't get better, then you're you're just not doing your job. So I think that uh, that's that's kind of the goal is get out there and you know try to get better. Has he been to Eldora? Huh. That's funny. So after after I had uh, kind of left uh, last year and I was working for uh, Kyle Reinhardt, we ran the Eldora Million, uh, which we qualified for. I was very proud of that. Um, and the like, we're we're waiting to go in. Uh, so if I remember right, we, we showed up like the day before because they said like all these people aren't going to get parking spots. It's going to be crazy. So we showed up the night before and the next morning, you know, we're waiting to get in and I see Devin. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, why, why are you here? Oh, uh, I had nothing to do. You know, they decided not to race it, but whatever. That's, you know, neither here nor there. But anyway, so yeah, he's been to Laura. He watched. <laughs> he, he walked in the gate like like all the rest of us fans would have. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm excited for that already. I, I, I didn't think he had been. But now I'm excited to watch to watch him run Eldora because I bet he would never want to come home. I just have a feeling he's never going to want to come back. Um, he'll want to be out in Ohio and run Eldora every time they're open. Um, you know, I've watched him the last, obviously, pretty much every race he's been in. Um, watching him run BAPS, I think, is is fun. And I feel like it suits him. What does he need to do at BAPS to finally get over the hump or to get over the hump and be a consistent top one, two guy there? Now, and again, maybe it's a combination. I'm not going to put it all in Devin, but I feel like it suits him. You can drive the car hard. There's typically something to run on up top every time you go there for a feature. I feel like it suits him. Or am I not thinking about that right? His style and and, and or setups. I think he's extremely good at BAPS. Um, I think it fits his style. I think if you give him just a decent car, he'll make it happen. Now, I so there. I think the second to last race. Um, I think Troy. Oh, did Troy win? That? Yeah, he Troy won, won the second. The last one. One. Danny split him on the last one. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, this, is the, this is the Devin I, Reinhardt. I think. Yeah. Yeah. He took us out. Yeah. yeah took. He, yeah, he still, I think he still Wait, When you still took us out, which team were you on at the time? I was working with Kyle. I thought so. Uh, okay, we were running second. So the guy I you're with now took out the guy you were with then. Okay. Okay. I'm on. Yeah. 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 So uh, anyway, I was, we were running second with Kyle and, and I thought we had a really good shot to win that race and a restart happened and Devin just completely drove through him. But uh, anyway, if it wasn't for that, uh, if you go back and you look, I'm pretty sure. Um, if Devin just runs a top three there, he wins the points at mm -hmm. Maps. Yeah, really? I believe so, that was I believe yeah, that was accurate. Pretty, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that that took him out of the point championship yeah. thing. For he's, he's there. He contends. He's always there. It's just I feel like he could. It could be one of those nights where he goes and wins by eight seconds. He drives that place really well. I've seen him. You know, yeah. slide people. He's aggressive when it's time to be aggressive there. It's, it reminds mm -hmm. me of that night at, at Port. Didn't he win by Port like by half a lap one night? He's going to do that at BAP sometime. I, I just I just have that feeling he's going to have that night. Well, yeah, well, that, you know what? Go ahead, I was sorry. Gonna say, I was going to say that, was say that BAP's really, I think the coolest part for me was watching Devin work on that car to get it back together to try to make it back out. He, he was basically playing crew chief in the pits there for two minutes, and they, they didn't make it back out. But, I mean, that told me a lot about him as a person. And, in general yeah um yeah he, he is a good kid he, he knows a lot more than people give him credit for when it comes to these race cars you know I'm, I'm pretty good friends with with his dad um and and his dad's a great guy he raised a really good kid the right way in my opinion and it shows i mean the, the kid is he, he he does not get credit for the hard worker that he that he really is um people think he's just this this kid that shows up and drives, and that's, that's just not the case. Um, do you, th I, I, I can't say, I can't figure out a reason I would, that I'd be wrong on this, but he comes into central PA that a uh, couple years back, kind of puts his name on the scene, gets an opportunity to run the Hefner car after that one weekend, right? Or two weekends. If he doesn't have the showing he does, goes back home to Raymond, Washington is running on the West coast. Do you feel like that would be a missed opportunity for the world to get to know Devin Borden? Because the racing, 
what he was doing out there? Or is there something I don't know about West Coast racing that it, where he lives in Washington that maybe he would be OK and get his name on the scene and end up where he is? We think he might go here. Do you think that even though he might be learning these lessons and growing in Central PA, that ultimately this is going to be better for him long term? I mean, this, this is absolutely a, a million times better for him. If he if he doesn't jump in uh, the 27 or 72, whatever it was, um, if he doesn't get that call, I, I don't think we, we're sitting here having this conversation right now. Yeah. Um, I had that feeling too. And yeah, sorry. I, uh, to me, that to me, that's 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 a plain and simple fact, black and white. Um, because and, and and trust me, there were there were a lot of people, um, you know, in, in you know in the know or whatever, that said, "Who the hell is this kid?" Like, you know, like that kid's really good. But I don't know that there was many people um, besides you know Mike Hefner that were willing to put him in their car. Um, yeah. And I think that was a situational thing too. You know, I th I think things you know might not have been going good with their current driver whatever um and so so if that if that race team is going better then i i think devin probably goes back home to washington and we hear about him every now and then but that that's he's not you know and may, maybe maybe his family saves up for a few years and makes another shot at it but i if if he doesn't drive that you know for mike hefner there, there's there's just no way um he would he would be where he's at right now um yeah and i mean you know living here racing here as good of a driver as he is um all of that I, th I think he's way behind without that happening yeah um so what you've worked with devin in the past um and you've worked with young guys in the past what do you have to do to help devin from your your perspective what things do you have to maybe improve on or use in your bag of tricks to help Devin do the things that he wants to do? So the number one thing, you know, working with, with any race car driver, young, old, you know, in the middle, whatever it is, is you have to instill confidence. Um, and, you know, breaking somebody down does not instill confidence. Um, you know, you can, you know, a kid like like Devin would go out there and make a stupid mistake, and you know, you, when you say you know something as simple as huh, "bet you won't do that again, dummy," you know, and like that, some you know, that's enough. You don't need to, you know, beat him into the dirt. He's already feeling bad. Uh, he already, you know, he now if he continues to make the same mistake, then obviously you you would have to you would have to maybe change your strategy a little bit. Um, but I would say the biggest thing is definitely instilling confidence um, and working together. You know, racing is absolutely a team sport. Um, you cannot, one way or the other, crew chief, driver, you know, tire specialist, car chief, whatever. You cannot be thinking for yourself. I mean, you 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 need to to work as a team. And if you do not work as a team, it, it'll you know you might win some races here or there, but it's going to show up and it's going to explode and it's not going to be good. Um, but you know, it's very, racing is very much a team sport um, and it, it takes everybody to, uh, to, to really make it work, you know, on, on, on the highest level. I mean, I know we're not, you know, running high limit or outlaws or, you know, or whatever, but uh, as far as the rest of the world's concerned, such Pennsylvania is the highest level. Um, and that's, that's what it takes to, uh, to make a good, a, a teamwork is teamwork. Um, you just you can't there's there can't be any pointing fingers there can't be you know i i say it all the time i i personally believe when you roll into the racetrack and you know we pull into our parking spot and that trailer door comes down it's us versus everybody um and it has to be us it can't be um you know uh there, there, there just can't be any issues you know i'm not saying you always have to get along because that's not possible but <laughs> At the end of the day, the ultimate goal has to be um, having a good team and making a team effort uh, and working together it has to be the goal. So speaking of the team, I've heard about Devin, Kelly, yourself, uh, and Mr. Stamen, John, John. Yeah, yeah. Who else helps you out on this team? uh jeff weaver helps us out uh he, he works up there every day uh he he works um 
on the racing stuff and then also uh, on some of the business stuff for John. Um, John's business is located in Lebanon, um, the race shops in Halifax, uh, which is which is where you know Devin goes there every day, uh, Jeff goes there every day, um, and then Canton um, is our tire specialist that we hired uh, over the off season. Um, I think he's I think everybody has done an excellent job. Um, we're, we're just getting started, you know, um, but we, you know, we have, we have people that work there every day. I, I cannot, I do not, um, uh, I would if I had to, but I, I don't have to, um, luckily, luckily we have, uh, you know, really, really good guys that, uh, they can, can maintain the stuff while I can't be there. You know, I, I have a real job, I call it, <laughs> um, but, and I, I enjoy it. I love my job. So I do not, uh, I, I, I don't plan on, on quitting it or, or anything like that. Um, it's, it's what I really enjoy doing, um, besides racing. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll hopefully have my job for, for a very long time. Um, and then also fortunately with my job, you know, it's, I can, my schedule can, can definitely vary. So racing, uh, is, you know, it's, it's definitely a priority, obviously. Um, and, and they allow me to, to, to go, to go and race. Um, but yeah, so we have, like I said, uh, Devin's there pretty much every day. Um, uh, Jeff Canton, um, they're there all the time too. um, you know, getting stuff ready when, when you have, when you have a team like John and Kelly have, um, it takes, it takes people, it takes hard work, uh, it takes dedication. So, um, you know, I, I, I feel like we have a strong team. Um, I feel like everybody kind of knows their job. Um, and I feel like everybody does a good job. We can always do better, but I feel like they, they all do a good job. So, um, and then on the fringe of this, speaking of people, we're, we're fairly close to the Perigo family. So I get to, I, occasionally we go to port and we'll see that they're kind of around a little bit watching. They don't really hands on with, with this car. Uh, obviously, you know, there's USAC Silver Crown car. There's a, uh, the 410 uh, uh, non-wing car that also runs under the the Stamen banner. Do you get involved in that side at all? Or are they kind of just uh, Paragos being Paragos out there on Pergo Island? I don't think they'd want me involved in that. But uh, no, I, the answer, no, I don't get involved in that at all. Uh, not my thing. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I, 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 I talk to those guys when I see them. Very nice group of people. Um, yeah, love, the, they, love those guys for sure. Yeah. But no, I'm, I'm not involved in, in any of that at all. Um, so, all good, Jimmy. Chris, what else you guys got? We'll get him out of here, man. We've, I was saying, let yeah. Jimmy do the fan. I'm good. Yeah, so Jimmy, got, do your fan questions. Got a got a couple questions here. Um, our YouTube comments are working for some reason. Dwayne Matha- Mathias said, "Is six three sixty in the plans this year? And what do you think three sixty needs? Uh, what three? What do three sixties need to do to get more popular in Central PA, or is it four ten or nothing?" Mm-hmm. Uh, so yes, 360 is in the plan. I love 360 racing. Uh, I think, uh, the wings, I mean, I know that was a big subject earlier, but the, <laughs> so the, the ASCS rules, uh, I call them ASCS wings, uh, but the ASCS wing rule is by far, uh, better than our current 410 wing rule, but, um, I think it provides great racing. Um, and the second part of that question, which would be what do 360s need to get more popular in central PA? Uh, probably get rid of four tens um, would be the only way. <laughs> you know, this is it, it, it's four ten country in Pennsylvania um, around here, and it's four ten or nothing. You know, and I try to tell people that all the time. I I, I know of other sprint car divisions. I'm not going to name them, but they complain about pay or they complain about this or cost or this or that. And it's like, listen, man, this is four ten country. Like, you can't expect to get paid anymore like you're like you're getting paid or you're getting paid because they're they're not going to pay you anymore because this is you know 410 sprint car country unfortunately um you know it's just it's just how it is you know um but so uh, one thing one reason is uh with the 360 thing is uh 360s in pa will never will never get popular because everybody looks at the rest of the country and what they pay 360s and there's nobody in central pa that's going to pay that pay that you know so so they look at, uh, let's say, like what ASCS pays and everybody, you know, around here is like, well, if I get a 360, that's what I should be racing for. Well, that's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen, you know. So that's one of the reasons why I think 360s will never happen in PA. 
um, is because nobody in PA will pay a 360 purse. Well, I think that's part of the reason you're seeing the 358 division grow quick and then they move up. They grow quick and they move up. They spend maybe a year, two years. They're quickly getting into the 410 division because to build a, three, a 358 around here, and if you have decent equipment, if you can get a motor, a 410, go 410 racing. If you can make a feature somewhere, you're going to win you're going to win some money. Yeah. Now, I still will make the argument um, to any team that runs a 358 or a low budget 410. If you're trying to make money, you're going about this all wrong. Um, if it's about what you win, because you're still going to far outspend what you win. If you're a 358 team and or a newer, fresher 410 team, doesn't matter. You're not, it's a hobby. It's not a job. There are levels at this and 410 racing at the very top. You can do a job, but that's a small percentage of people that own a sprint car. All right, get off that soapbox. Yeah, but I mean, I also know. do believe you're, that's why you're seeing those 358 guys spend less time in that division. If they can afford to get a 410, they're going to go right up and do it. Yeah, as, as, as you know, as they kind of should, you know. Um, the, the only thing that's troubling to me, uh, to be completely honest with you, I know this is a whole other subject, but the only thing that's troubling to me is you might see that young guy, uh, well, to be honest with you, like Troy, you know. When I saw Troy race at 358, I'm like, man, I hope this kid gets a shot someday um, because he's, you could tell he was really good. You know, he's talented. Um, and you just don't see those kids that are really good get those shots anymore because we just don't have the car owners. You know, now 90% of these deals are some sort of family deal, um, which is great. I mean, I'm thankful we have that. But, you know, most of these, you know, there, there really aren't a whole lot of car owners uh, hiring outside people anymore. And it's it's kind of sad because it's you know the days of a of a of a kid that that has you know a ton of talent you know let's say like Devin you know it's it's he he got very fortunate to to get a shot and it's it's kind of tough watching some of these kids run these three fifty eights or three sixties and knowing that they deserve a shot but they might never get it. Yeah. And, you know, I've been hearing that for 20 years, though, right? There's less and less owners, less and less owners. And you're right. I don't think and occasionally we get some pop up and then occasionally we get one fade away. There is a cycle to this. And I think that if a kid sticks with it long enough, they'll get the shot. But it's are they prepared to take advantage of that opportunity and how patient will an owner be? Right. It's not that different than NASCAR in a way, except we're not really buying in. There's generally so many premier 410 rides. And I agree. Right. Like I, I look at some of the kids we've had on here. I know that there's some of those kids in 358s that can go and, and compete someday. They have the talent to compete in the 410 division, but with who and how long and how much money and will it last? So I agree with you, but at the same time, I've been hearing about this less owners thing for 20 years. We're still here. We're still going. It's still thriving in central PA. People tend to figure it out. And there's people that have been watching the sport. They might own a business. They might want to try to build a car. You know, we see that happen here and there. Um, we still do every year, right? You see a team pop up and yeah, they're not a premier yet, but they give a kid a shot maybe or a veteran. And then they're a couple of years in like Kale Thomas, we just had on, right? Jay Kaiser. It was kind of, kind of build it, kind of build it, kind of build it. And I think it, I think you have ebbs and flows to it as long as the bills can get paid and the tracks can stay open. It, that to me, that's, that's it. If, if central Pennsylvania, we can continue to put fans in the stands, the show, it starts there. It starts with the fans and owners of businesses willing to support the cars and the tracks. After that, it, it, yeah, there's going to be definitely kids that don't get that shot. I agree with you. And they're going to go and do whatever they do in life. But I think we will always be fairly healthy around here if we can keep some of that business owner fan money continuing to come to the sport and tracks stay open. You know, I'm hopeful. But we'll see. Um, question from Santos here. Uh, are you guys running your SRT shocks this year? Uh, actually, we we probably will some. Um, we haven't yet. Um, I have a lot going on um, to to try to do to try to build my own shocks and also, uh, you know, do do what I need to do at the racetrack. Um, so we, we, I'm sure we will. Um, I, I we we have a couple different options right now. Um, I've I have a lot of faith in in the 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 shock program that we have right now. We actually have two different ones. Um, I'm kind of working with uh, uh, competition suspension a little bit on some stuff. Uh, that's what 
we've been running here uh, well the last time we raced um he uh he gets it he, he builds stuff the right way it's he has a good product um if, if and if i you know, if i can't don't have time to build him um I, I like what he's doing so so we're gonna run his stuff uh for now um and then you know john uh, uh you know has already has multiple uh of uh, factory cane stuff which i don't believe there's anything wrong with that either um i've gone through every single shock uh, we've sent stuff back to the builder um that i didn't like so um but yeah uh either way our shock program will be on point <laughs> <laughs> um john fraker asks how is your golf game these days so i quit playing for i don't know four or five years and uh, st I actually started playing again last year. I got a hole in one at the Gobrecht. Oh, wow. Um, at the Bridges. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I forget who's on my team. Kyle, Justin Peck, and oh my gosh, Adam Lawrence were on my team. So they all witnessed it, plus like 15 other people because it was all backed up. And uh, anyway, it was pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, but a golf game, uh, so I picked up my clubs again uh, the, towards the end of the summer and was like, oh, man, I shot like uh, 88 or something. And I'm like, still got it. And then I think my next five rounds were like 115. It was really <laughs> bad, really bad. So uh, now I'm excited to hopefully I'll get – I have to make time to play this year because I forgot how much I enjoyed it. I, re I really do enjoy golf. So, uh, Tyler – Koenig said, uh, asks, what is your everyday job? I do uh, outside sales for an aftermarket auto parts company. So my job is to actually for Fisher Auto Parts. Uh, everybody thinks it's federated, but I work for Fisher Auto Parts. Um, they're the largest federated affiliate. Uh, but anyway, uh, the company I work for has about 600 stores, 18 states. Um, so it's a fairly large company. Um, and my job is, I'm sure, uh, hopefully you guys all get your car inspected uh, yearly like you're supposed to. Uh, but my job is to go into whatever shop it is you take your car to uh, and try to get them to buy uh, parts from our stores and not the competition. Um, Jaden Bingaman asks, Chris, how about them Eagles? <laughs> yeah, uh, big Eagles fan. Uh same. Try to make it to a game or two every year. Uh, a little disappointed with how the season ended, but uh, yeah. I see they're making moves today. So they I'm awesome expecting big things, things, right? Yeah. <laughs> Until just uh, lift us up just to let us down again. Just <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, just John Johnson with a comment saying, my boy can't wait for you guys to come to the Northwest. So thank you, John, for watching. Yeah. Um, and that's really it. So, um, oh, one more, Gary Ferguson. Will you guys entertain any Ohio Speed Week? Uh, actually, that is some of that is on the table right now. Um, I'd have to, I don't have a schedule right in front of me, but I think, uh, there's a couple days. I think, like the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday race, I think we're probably a very good possibility for us. Um, if we can't take, uh, if, for whatever reason, uh, we're not in the position to do that. Uh, I'll call you know my buddy Brian Grove and maybe run his car. Um, if there's a racetrack anywhere in the country that you could take Devin to and race, what would it be? And we haven't raced. Yeah, uh, I mean it's got to be Eldora, but uh, I think that Devin is a much more technical racer than people give him credit for. So I think I. I think after a little bit, I think he would do well at Knoxville um, and definitely Eldora. Uh, but if we could race Bridgeport every week, I'd be happy. <laughs> that, that's, that's, I'll tell you what, and, and we were talking about that earlier. I, I've been to, I went to Bridgeport the fall before in this past fall where my two times there. And if there's a style or a track that fits a style like Devin of just drive it as hard as you freaking can and hope something good happens on the other end, it's Bridgeport. Because <laughs> I, I watched him not this past year, the year before, I think he, had to, he something happened, he went to the back, and and they took off and went. By the second lap, he was passing four wide, like diamond it, past three or four in one corner. Like, 
he was fast that night. I forget what happened. A tire or spun out or, you know, got caught up in something. But it, 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 he's unbelievable watching him at that place and how hard he can drive, and it works. That place is very cool. Very cool. It's it's. I don't want to. We have a buddy Alex that's an, an announcer there, so we give him a hard time and say we hate it <laughs> to him. That's what we do to friends. Um, fired but, up. <laughs> but I hate driving there. I hate for traveling there. But I really enjoy that whole facility right. and that place and everything about it. Um, it it's cool and it deserves better. It deserves more four ten shows because the four tens put on a great show there. Yeah. Um, so hopefully they can get all that worked out. Whatever's going on internally at that place they get it figured out and we get some more big big series and events there for wing cars for sure so uh Definitely jimmy chris any top other? two or three yeah anything else for chris while we're while we're here i'm good, cool. good. uh no uh, uh thank you so much for taking the time to join us tonight i especially on short notice you know uh but when that whole liquor bill thing came up i know jay-z was like oh this is a good good opportunity to do this so um Definitely learned a lot. I really, really, we all really, really appreciate you coming on. Is there anybody you want to give a shout out or thanks or sponsors or anything like that before you go? Uh, just stay in motorsports. You know, uh, I think, I think we're going to have a, uh, we're going to have a good year uh, with Devin. Um, you know, all, all the guys that, that make it possible, you know, all the sponsors and all the guys on the team too. You know, I'm super excited. Um, I, I, I can't ask for a better group of guys. Um, I really think we're going to help each other do good things so uh, i'm i'm excited well good luck at the track this year we're, we're looking forward to you guys and probably see you guys in victory lane multiple times um yeah so we'll see you thank you very much so. all right thank you guys i appreciate yep. it thanks for your time yep have a good night thanks chris shuttlesworth everybody that was uh that was both of those interviews were really really great um with chris uh he didn't he didn't mince words so he, he he let his opinion known and um it all makes sense to me so jerry's mute. you're a mute me you know what i just realized <laughs> did you hear did you see what i said um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um i i just realized i said hey we'll see you this weekend you, you know like williams grove is sunday yep yep and there's a new bridge is it up yet I've not oh, seen no, a picture. No, no new bridge. <laughs> I don't think there's a new bridge. We're not going to have heard it. anything. I heard about the bridge actually. I know, but it's Monday. Maybe I should go look tomorrow. Maybe you should, and let us know because I mean, listen. I guess they could start a season without the bridge. They'll have to figure out how to get people across and do whatever. Well, I'm thinking more of if we start a season without the bridge, why are we putting a bridge back at all? But that's a separate thing. Because once it's yeah. gone, I'm I'm a part of the group of don't put a bridge back but whatever well how do you get people across the track that are in the on the back stretch walk across the track that you do at Sealands grove yep yeah, but fan, it's not a mass exit it's like you see at williams grove there's like 20 fans that do that at Sealands yeah, grove once a night at williams grove every break there's 100 fans crossing or more it'll be a lot less if they're not allowed to cross okay uh let us know <laughs> yeah. there's but, also yeah, a no. tunnel you could go all yeah, the way. You, could, you have to go yeah, all the way around. Mile around. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, that, this, this is great tonight. I know we went longer than usual. Our podcast listeners tomorrow will enjoy this on their this road is, trip, wherever they're this heading. Is like, this is like the old days. Yeah. I, I, but this is great. This is great content tonight. Great mm -hmm. guests. Um, had a great time with it. And man, this week, there's a lot happening. Lots yeah. of stuff. Okay. So, real quick, breaking news that came out earlier today new paint scheme reveals. Actually, I, I didn't post the other one. Ryan Taylor put his new oh, scheme yeah. up. Steve Buckwalter has his new scheme up. I did put a picture Looks up there. Good. Love Looks this good. blue. Love yeah, it. It's yeah. subtle changes, but man, is that going to look sharp. Um, looking forward to that. And <laughs> funny story, that car has been ready since like the middle of last summer. So um, <laughs> it was done. It was ready to go. And they, what they're doing with it. That, it was right there. You see it. Saving it. it? They finished up, finished up the stuff they had and finished the year on that. So uh, Ryan Taylor has his new scheme out. Uh, Williams Grove only this year, it looks like, for Ryan. So let's get a little oh, scaling really? back. That's, uh, that's what I saw. Um, and Jaden Wolf put out his schedule today, 358, mm -hmm. Lincoln only. As far as written on paper, we talked with him right. about that. Maybe see how the season goes um, after that. Um, also, uh, Wednesday, BAPS testing. 
first one of the year. It's going to be 70 degrees. If you live anywhere near the BAPS, it's free to get in as a fan. Come out. I would assume being the first one of the year, there's going to be a lot of race cars. They get each session. They'll they'll do each division. They'll get six, eight laps each and, and see some race cars. Um, it's always fun going to those. Um, I've always enjoyed it, even before I did the photography thing, where you see a bunch of just unlettered, unnumbered cars, and you're wondering who the hell it is. They don't announce it. They don't tell you. You're just like, hmm, what are who's in that car, right? Like, is it somebody moving up? Are they testing something? Whatever. So that's always a good time. And I think I think I read on their post they're going to have a new concession stand vendor of some sort going to be there Wednesday and open. I have to look up who that is. So uh, BAPS testing on Wednesday. Lincoln on Saturday. 410s, 358s. 358 race of the year, first one. BAPS um, on Saturday. BAPS on Saturday, their opener. Port Royal's opener with STSS. Friday, Saturday. Uh, Friday, Saturday, big 50 grand to win Saturday, main show. Yeah, 50 grand to win, 75 laps on Saturday. Big one there. And then uh, Williams Grove opener Sunday. We have four tens and the wingless super sportsman. Yeah, let's go. And namely, Brett Perigo. Brett Perigo. We're, we, we've gotten the script leaked from Williams Grove. Uh, the script has Brett Perigo as the winner. Uh, we actually got the graphic. Um yeah, we, gonna, we found it in the we j- did some data mining. Um, Justin, the, Justin Lowe just sent it to us actually, but in the files, yeah, we found it. Um, you know, it, it's it's out there. I really uh, hope actually, I, we're, I'm, gonna, we're I'm gonna leak it right now. I really Hold hope on. my Thursday crowd's watching this so they know. There it is. Your 2024 winner winner is Brett Perigo. Right. I'm a, <laughs> he's the only one that thinks that, by the way, right now. We've been trolling him with that all for like two weeks now, so um, we have a good time with it. But yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to this week and this weekend, and um, we're gonna have a few warm days in the middle of the week, and then I saw after that for the next two weeks it's gonna be cold again. But hey, maybe it won't rain on a Saturday for once. Maybe it's, it's looking a little bit better. Yeah, it's maybe. It's, yeah, it's been a wild weather every day. It seems a new new forecast for next weekend, but so far we'll so good. Yeah, we'll see. Chris, what, what do you got going on on Thursday, Thursday for the Rolling Podcast? So Thursday, 7 p.m., tune up for the Sportsman Weekend with Eric Rutz. Um, he's going to do double duty this weekend, Saturday with the wing car, um, and then taking the wing off Sunday for Winners Grove. Um, he's a good guy. Look forward to that. Met him a few times, hung out with him a few times at BAPS last year. Um, so excited for that one. Tony and I are going to keep on rolling here. Oh, mm-hmm. I see what you did. And even better, uh, my shirt, because the 19 is Eric, and then next week his brother Ryan is on. There you go. Look at you being two weeks, two weeks out. Look at you. We're you, guys are, you guys are scheduled for a whole whole month. <laughs> These guys, he prepares better for his <laughs> second show than our primary <laughs> show. So, so <laughs> Jay-Z two hours before the show, it's like. Let's get a guess. Yeah. Let's get yeah. A- <laughs> we're, we're booked. And, there's always, and there's always one here, isn't it? God damn right. go. and, and we're booked until April 4th on Thursday. So, fun facts. Tony's Tony's got the wrong Tony, needs, Tony needs more hobbies. He needs, <laughs> well, you know. I just, we got Craig Perigo. That was all my fault. He made me do it. I'm like, fine. T- right. Craig Perigo is moving his basket weaving class to come to our show. Can you believe like, that? That's, that's when you know it's, it's serious legit. stuff. Man. Um, <laughs> Before we go, quick predictions for actual 410 winner on Sunday at Williams Grove. Whoever starts in the poll. Give me. Man, I'm, I'm going Macri. I'm going Freddie Raymer. I'm taking Lance DeWeese. Ooh. I forgot about Lance I, I can get down with that. I'm going to go Freddie, though. Okay. Freddie's not a bad pick. Wait, who's the third one? I pick Macri. 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 Well, I mean, listen, if you're going to pick three guys, it's pretty good. The only one we're probably missing is Danny. Danny. Uh, well, yeah, that and, and Troy and Devin. And Troy, um, yeah. And yeah. Chase Deetson. Chase Deetson. <laughs> if any of those five Chase Wolf and... start yeah. on the poll, it, it might be game over. Because if they don't get 24 cars, you're not going to get the lot of traffic. I wonder if Billy's going. I think they get 24 cars. I don't remember Billy's schedule. It's going to be nice. It's Williams Grove. Um, yeah. Sunday, everybody's itching to get out now at this point. I think they get 24 cars. And I think we'll have a good sportsman race. Do we see, you know, TJ Stutz at Williams Grove in what car? Um, do we see, um, you know, uh, 
Jeff Halligan? Do we see, you know, I, those are the kind of the fringe ones. Um, a Jordan Givler. Now they may have some plans in Western PA, but we got to watch the weather. Maybe, maybe. But what other cars do we see showing up Sunday? You know, um, we're going to have to use Tony and all the other various Twitter accounts out there to, to predict who's going to show up Sunday. Yeah. Sure. I'm it's genuinely curious. Opening day, day show, Rick Lafferty. Oh, yeah, probably. Um, you know, like genuinely curious of how many cars we think will show up and who. Uh, I know like Austin Bishop would be there. Justin Whittle. So kind of the usual cast of characters. And then who else? Dylan Norris. So kind yeah, of, I think the full field's definitely in the cards, but how right. many? I, There's uh sure. so I don't go I'm not sure either what does the weather look like down in Texas because maybe you get some guys coming back this way if it changed their mind. Change their mind. You know, high limit guys kinda, you know, not necessarily I don't think Brett Marks, but maybe maybe like a Justin Peck or something. You know what I you know what I mean? Well, and I think it depends on. Listen, they the high limit guys can go wherever, so they could they could if it's less travel from Texas to Pennsylvania or Texas to wherever the outlaws are. I don't even know where they're going to be, right? Well, actually, wait, they're going to be a Cotton Bowl or, or Cotton Bowl, yeah. And high limit is what's next for them. High limit doesn't race till April. Yeah, so who no. knows? Yeah. yeah, I don't know. So I think you might see me because Zeb Wise won this last year. It was rained out a couple weeks. Yeah. It's a Friday night show. But Zeb Wise won it last year. We had we've seen, you know, COVID year was Col- uh, Carson Macedo. So it's not eight. out of the realm for some some of these national guys maybe to come pop in. And then get some racing in that they're not getting done. So right. yeah. So definitely keep an eye on that. Definitely excited for that. I'm actually excited to go to Williams Grove. There's twenty wingless sportsmen that seem to be confirmed so far. So that's cool. So that could be two full fields that keep going. Oh, Tony Jackson's gonna be there for this. Oh car. yeah, that's right, Tony Jackson. Tony Jackson, Tony Jackson will be at Lincoln on on Saturday as well. Potentially, yeah, it's going to be definitely a Williams Grove race. Yeah, they're going to test this week. I know they're going to test this week. Shake the car down. Um, I forget which day, but on his schedule, they said they're going to try to be at Lincoln, and then it sounds like the Grove Sunday. So that'd be uh, an interesting one. What's that, Tony? Because I think if he's one, he's one of those guys. I would say if they somehow start like the front row, I could, could see him winning. With that car, knowing how good that team is, and knowing how good he is, I think it'd be a little of a shocker. And that's a hell of an expectation. But if you're taking a long shot, then I could. Well, see I mean, listen, it's. I would assume it's a draw for heat race lineups, right? Yeah. Asia yeah, on Sunday. Yeah. Who knows what He's the track the icebreaker format, like. right? Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Who so. knows? I, but I, I'm excited to find out. It's Williams yeah. Grove. It's been a while. Um, it'll be it'll be it'll be a good time to get there and watch some racing and see if there's a bridge. If you guys are in the area, get your ass to a track this weekend. Lots of racing starting to happen now. Uh, pretty much all the tracks except for Sealands Grove in the area are all running this weekend. So get there. Uh, support these tracks. Uh, and oh, it helps. Every different division possible, too. Yeah, just really. Got a, I just got a DM from Dave Smelter. Shout out. Justin Peck will be in the 20 at Williams Grove Sunday. Hey, look at that. Not the Peck in the 20. That's right. I did remember seeing that a couple weeks back in the 20. So um that that's good call oh i would assume steve buckwalter will be there sunday steve right buckwalter. yeah so, so it's starting to add up here uh, guys yeah. that in, in my is i'm talking about more and more cars so i mean it, we yeah. could have 30 cars you really could I, I it's a stretch but i i think at least a full field of 24 is, is i think 28 is the number i'm going with 28 is a good number i like that number i like that too good job chris i do yeah. my best good job man he's on All right. tonight so get to a track this weekend. Thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. Great Hang two guests. There. Sorry for about um the it, it's just the turn two terrible's Facebook comments that were coming up. All the other comments from the other pages and YouTube and Twitch were coming up. I don't I don't know why they weren't coming up. So uh maybe I'll try to get back, go back uh, look and see. Yeah, I'll go through and read through some and do something with something like that. Uh, it seemed like though a lot of the questions though were being answered by the guys you know what i mean later on down the line so it's not like they went unanswered but um thank you guys so much uh and we'll see you guys next week awesome. maybe sunday at williams grove yeah shout out come see us